What's going on? I am Nando. And I'm DJ. And I'm Diggins. <laughs> It's like me, little diggins, boy. This is mostly nitpicking, a podcast where every week we pick apart a piece of pop culture by looking exclusively at the details. Woo! Woo! Yeah, you're right. This week we're doing a Batman movie. Batman returns to the podcast for probably yes, like a does. fifth or sixth time from other movies, and you know, probably like a hundredth time from talking about him a lot, but also from doing it last week. And doing, uh, unlike yeah. uh, other podcasts we may have done, this one has never been done by us before. Honestly, For last sure. week should have been called Batman Returns. I think I said that in the in the little Batman, description. Bat, well, in the description, you said Batman 1898 Returns. I'm so bad with numbers. Um, it's, <laughs> I would love to watch Batman 1898. I think it'd be, uh, they, they made one of those, didn't they? Yeah, like, they did the Gotham by Gaslight um, Gotham, that's cartoon Gotham by Gaslight. That, based yeah. off the comic. I don't know. What is the ga- Gaslight like time frame looking like? Like, what year is that? I mean, it's like mid to late 1800s, more or less. Oh, okay, yeah. So maybe that is what that was. We did it. Maybe we we'll do that it, next guys. week. Probably not. Nah, next week, Moonfall, maybe. Moonfall. Yeah. Is that Moon's a movie haunted. theater exclusive? <sighs> it is. That's the problem. It's like, no. with some of these uh. movies, I'm like, man, you know what? Uh, I, I would feel bummed out if I caught COVID to see Spider-Man and like, <laughs> You know, not like I'd hide from it, obviously, but like if it, like I just feel like such an idiot because you're. But I would feel like, yeah, exactly. But I would feel like the biggest idiot catching COVID from Moonfall from and Moonfall, just having to explain right? that yeah. to people. Yeah, um, I think I just say I, I just, saw Spider Man. I just couldn't miss the new Roland Emmerich film. I mean, what can I say? <laughs> yeah, I'm a Will Stan. I'm a Patrick Will Stan, and uh, he's in it. <laughs> He's one of the four moon fallers. So that's Samuel Tarley. Is that is that? Is yep. that him? he's in there. And then you got Halle Berry is the third one. Catwoman's own. Oh, Catwoman's own. Yeah, nice. different Catwoman though. Completely different name and everything. Um, did we talked about this? But her name is like. Do you guys remember what it is in the movie? It's not Selena Kyle. It's something. It's like it's something really dumber. bad, like Constance Good or something like that. It's a character <laughs> that would show up in like the Crucible names. Um. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, yeah, but I've, it's I've awful. never seen the Holly Berry Catwoman. Oh my so. god, we should do that next week instead of fucking Moonfall. But then, also, how will I find out if the moon's haunted? I mean, you just got to <laughs> assume at this point everything's haunted. Either everything's haunted or nothing is. Has anyone died on the moon? No, right? Not that we know of. That's true. Her name is Patience Phillips. Okay, so I was I was off, but close. Uh. You, you were and you weren't. Yeah, so that's you the... You were wrong, but also somehow super right. She could totally be in... You could see Patience Phillips in the in the Crucible. She's yeah. one of them. And maybe that's why. Maybe it's a clever Crucible character, like, you know, reusing that name. And that's why they did it. Maybe this... Maybe Catwoman, like, 20 or 2005, was a version... Like, was really subversive and really clever, and we just didn't understand it. Maybe that's what my April Fool's YouTube video essay will be about. will be like... Ooh, about that's the, a good idea. The Catwoman movie is a misunderstood masterpiece. Yeah, because I feel like we've gone through the ringer in terms of just, like, rehabilitating everything. Like, every movie is actually good. You guys were wrong. And... That one I haven't seen. Green Lantern I haven't really seen. But uh, you saw it on this time. podcast when I was like, I think this movie's kind of good, actually. Oh, over Green Lantern. That's tr- oh, yeah, man, yeah. yeah. That's true. I'm talking like not kind of good. I'm talking like this is actually the best one of these. Like the, I feel oh, like yeah, no, I, didn't I mean the that. Star Wars rehabilitation was big. Like that, the prequels have been. Yep, I feel like that's only kind of stuck. Like, I do see people saying that, but for the most part, people are still like, those prequels aren't good. That's true. That's fair. I'm trying to think of what the other ones are, but they exist. Like, every so often, one of the Marvel movies gets rehabilitated. Um, Amazing Spider-Man 2, that one I've seen a lot. Every we all single know what the person truth is. who says that is lying. Yeah, like, Andrew Garfield is good, but the movie is not. Mm-hmm. And we all have to yep. just be honest with ourselves. But yeah, maybe Catwoman is. Who knows? Um... It's got the second, or I guess the first instance of Benjamin Bratt playing basketball in a movie about superheroes. Wow. You guys remember what the f- second one was? No. 
Oh my god. It's the most amazing thing that's just hiding in the Marvel Universe waiting to be found is Benjamin Bratt is a character named Pangborn who is the guy who <gasps> is paralyzed Pangborn. in the beginning of Doctor Strange and then uses magic powers to make his legs better so he can play basketball. Yeah, because we all know Pang... I mean, yeah, Nando, we yeah. all know Pangborn. Come on. Obviously. Pangborn. You're right. I do know yeah. Pangborn. I'm, I'm ashamed best. that I couldn't bring that to mind immediately. <laughs> can you guys imagine? Imagine. Okay. Oh my god, what if like <laughs> and 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 this would someone could make this. I mean, it would be a lot of work. But Wong is like, "You wanted more?" And then Ant-Man bursts out and out of his hand comes Pangborn with like a basketball <laughs> doing basketball <laughs> tricks, and then that's the Avengers assemble. It's not like and then Pangborn's like the other two or three or whoever else was supposed to be in here did die. It seemed like they were going to and Rocket Raccoon is dead now, but it's cool cuz Pangborn's in the house, baby. He had mega legs. The first instance or second instance of mega legs. Doesn't he get killed in the post credit scene of that movie? It's unclear. He might just get his magic, like, you know, sucked out by uh, Mordo. But he, like, falls down. Did somebody so. say sucked out? Oh, my God. What? You, Merv, I, you're going to, you want to, you know, pace yourself. I would, I, I don't even know how to say this in a way that doesn't sound kind of sexual. But we're no, going to need a lot from you this week, Merv. Yeah, he's, um, uh, how sh- shall we say, uh, horny for this one. Yeah, it's going to be a lot. So just, you know, stamina is important, I guess, is probably the lesson you can take. <laughs> but we are talking about a movie this week, you guys. Batman Returns. Amazing. Woo! Real quick chit chat. There was one chit chat I wanted to say. Oh, Destiny. What about that? Oh, yeah. Uh, Sony acquired uh, Bungie for a cool, cool three point six billion. Oh my god! Um, that's like five think, apes. That's what, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think it has any impact on our predictions. Um, I will no. say, as like a personal, like person who's obsessed with Destiny, I'm made upset by this news because while Bungie's like e- everything's going to be fine, you know, there's going to be like a Spider-Man PS5 exclusive, so I'm going to have to play Destiny on console, and I'm going to have to remember how to like use a controller for a oh, first-person yeah. shooter. So. So mm-hmm. that sucks if I'm going to want to get my Spider-Man uh, exclusive. I want to say yeah, congratulations to Bungie eight years from now when they're free from Sony. <laughs> what do yeah. you mean? Well, I mean, they'll be bought well, by Disney at that point when Sony is bought oh, by Disney. Sure, so sure, sure. They'll, they'll um, be part of the Spider-Man. I will say, or there was, this week was a time for someone else to get their prediction ruined besides me. Well, oh, I mean, who, it, who, it, it was actually concern? vindicated, if anything. No, I don't know about that one, Anna, uh, because uh, the trailer came out for a certain TV show, <laughs> and it's looked not very good. I think it looked fine. Oh, yeah. I think it looked, it looked fine, you know? You had all the things you want. The Covenant, Sand, Gun, well, Man, we'll, uh, Deep Voice we'll Man. Find, we'll find out how good that Halo show is in, in March, or someone will, because I certainly don't have Paramount+. Plus. Yeah, I don't have Paramount+. Plus. I, I can't can't keep uh, giving it to all these fucking streamers. So, uh, I'm going to watch it services. legally, you know? That's going to be great. I recommend everybody That's watch true. it legally. I'll use my free trial and watch it legally. Yeah. Yeah, it's seven days, so you just, you know, get a... Just watch at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the CGI was awful. Um, I It, it looks terrible. It, it looks truly terrible. So, yeah. I want to say terrible. I feel like it looks very okay. I think the guys, the Covenant guys looked okay. I don't love the look of Cortana, but I don't really care. But that is a strange choice, I guess. Guys, what we have to understand is that uh, normal people who aren't degenerate gamer freaks won't want to fuck the AI lady if she's all blue. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> But also, they have no idea this exists. They're not degenerate gamer freaks, so they'll never even hear about it. I do, I'll do. i say this for the Halo show. Besides the fact that I have to like it because I want the prediction to be right, I will say the bit where it's like Master Chief is like a weapon that we could control and Master Chief is like, I don't want to be controlled. That's an angle for a Halo show. So that's better than nothing, you know? If the first one was just like, I gotta find the Halo so quickly. That would gotta be finish the fight. Do, 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 yeah. do, do. So that's great. But yeah, I don't know. It was definitely wasn't amazing. But we'll see. Maybe it'll be great. Mm, maybe. There's always maybe. There's always maybe. But you know what? This is a tough one. Yeah, Sp- you do that transition. Uh, speaking of... Just may- refuse. 
DJ, we can't throw him a lifeline. He's got to do this on his own. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Speaking of people who I, I don't. I Speaking of maybe Catwoman is a different person or something. I don't know. Speaking of Oof, maybe. Gross. Speaking of. Speaking of maybe. Speaking blues, of people this is a movie. who are degenerate freaks that want to fuck. Oh, sure. Yeah, if we're going that far back. Oh, absolutely. Speaking of big man with deep voice and gun, we got to talk about <laughs> Batman and all the friends that shoot at Batman. So, Because ba- Batman doesn't have... Does Batman have a gun in this? I can't remember. No, he doesn't have a gun. He yeah, does not use so. a gun. He uses some other murderous devices. I mean, sometimes he uses a gun. That's. I feel like in the... Um, and the one we did last week, didn't he have a gun at some point or something? Something, like, very gun-like. I guess he exploded all those guys. Yeah, but not specifically, like, a gun. Yeah. He well, exploded like, that one guy's penis. Yeah, that guy's penis ate shit. Ate shit. Yeah, he, um... I couldn't figure out what he used to knock over... Like, so in the first scene where stuff's, like, the the clown gang, red... What are they called? The red tent gang or something? The red triangle gang. Red for triangle. For some reason. Yeah, when the Red Triangle gang is popping off, he's got all kinds of, like, stuff in his Batmobile. One of them is, like, little flaps that he uses to beat the guys that are on motorcycles, and I couldn't figure out what was actually going on there. Um, Besides just flaps opened and those guys fell. So I assume that he hit them with the flaps, but... Yeah, I think they had, like, big stilt legs and he hit the stilts. So there were two guys. The stilt guys had, he had, like, little fins that came out of the Batmobile and tripped him. But then there was the guy, I think there were two of them maybe, on uh, little dirt bikes with big giant um, skulls on. And there were little flaps that opened on the side of the Batmobile that were not those still trippy things. And he, when he passed those guys, they fell off their motorcycles. But even having watched it just seconds ago, uh, because it's currently going in the background, I don't know what really happened there. But (laughs) yeah, I mean, he's he's got some guns. Sometimes the Batmobile has a gun on it. Like in, That's true. I mean, the Bat Jet had many guns on it. That's what movie. I was thinking of. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Jet has guns. There you go. And did the did the um did the boat have guns on it? The Bat Ski Boat? I don't think so. I cannot if remember. If it does, he doesn't use them because he mm. he kind of just shows up in the Bat Jet and everyone's already left. Yeah, that's true. It's pretty good. He just like crashes it into Penguin by like landing on Penguin's little rubber ducky boat. Just awesome. <laughs> Love that rubber ducky boat. So we're talking about Batman Returns, you guys. Incredible. Woo! Can't wait. So who's in charge of IMDBing it? You are, sir. Oh, thank God. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank God, like, you already read it. Or no, I was worried about guess. this one. Um, uh, okay. I am, too, for what it's worth. Not Crap. because... Well, just because there's so many directions. There's so many villains. There's so much going on. Um, yeah. I, uh... Yeah, so I've got it open. Let me read it real quick. Okay. <sighs> It's a lot of clauses. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to read it one more time. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> I'm worried, Diggins. Okay, I I think I see it. I see how this sentence is supposed to be said. Uh, it's a lot. Uh, not like it's very long. It's probably of average length, but it's just poorly connected. constructed. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't think it's a good sentence. So you know, there's that. Um, who goes first? Uh, yeah. I pick, um, yeah. I just want to get this over with, so I'll go first. Okay. Sure. Go for sure. it, DJ. What do you think the, All right. the uh, IMDb summary for Batman Returns is? All right. I'm going to go super on the nose. Batman returns to Gotham City to vi- fight the vicious penguin, a deformed criminal who lives in the sewer with an army of penguins and clown associates. Um, funded by billionaire Max Shrek, they plot to take over Gotham City, uh, when a mysterious newcomer, Catwoman, comes along to uh, foil Batman's attempt to stop them. All right, that was really bad at the end, but whatever. Okay. I just try to say as much as possible. All right, sure, sure, sure. Uh, okay. Uh, the Caped Crusader... Must defend Gotham City from uh, the emergence of the Penguin, a deformed uh, sewer dweller and former uh, scion of a rich Gotham family, uh, and his alliance with Max Shrek, the ambitious uh, and ruthless businessman 
all while tangling with the new uh the new vigilante in town, Catwoman. Okay. Uh I'm gonna give it to Diggins. Oh you were nice. Diggins nice. Yeah, Diggins had the framing of it correct. He also got two important words. DJ you got one. Uh you both called the penguin deformed. Uh okay. but Diggins called Max Shrek a businessman while DJ called him uh, a billionaire. Uh, and he is indeed described here as a businessman. But when you when you hear the whole thing, you'll probably also be like, oh, yeah, and Diggins going to have that bit more, too. Here we go. All right. I'm going to really try. I mean, while you don't Batman, need to read it. I agree with you that I was more right. Oh, yeah, but you have to hear this sentence. This is one sentence. While Batman deals with a deformed man calling himself the Penguin, wreaking havoc across Gotham with the help of a cruel businessman, a former employee of the latter becomes the Catwoman with her own vendetta. So... It's not real a run-on sentence. sentence there. Yeah, a lot of lot of like withs and across with yeah. the help I, I of did. with her own vendetta. Yeah, I was trying to establish that in mind. I tried to make it a very badly yeah. constructed sentence on purpose. It was good, and I think you had the right thing, which was kind of like and and DJ had this too, but I think yours was a little bit clearer. Where it was like Batman is dealing with a deformed man who's working with the billionaire. The Catwoman mm-hmm. is there too, like. An afterthought of the sentence, here comes Catwoman. So, way to go, Christopher Dickens. This has nothing uh, to do with our arrangement that's cheating. Yeah, the, with I, our cheating arrangement that doesn't exist. And nobody can that. prove it. I mean, I can. I have the text, but I won't show them. Right. I mean, what are we, Bill Bilicek? We're not just going to yeah. <laughs> text it out. Yeah. I'll call the I don't deflator. Know how to call... He loves texts. <laughs> I don't know how to call bullshit on this, but um, I sure would like to. But um, I, I guess I lose this one. It would help if you had called. I, I think I was kind of hoping. Here's what I was hoping for. I was hoping one of you. I'm glad you both called him deformed because that's a good one. Um, also, both of you said things about like Bat got really into Batman and his name and stuff. And neither of you were like it didn't matter. Um, I right, wonder right, if he'll right. ever get called the Cape Crusader in these. Probably Batman and Robin. <laughs> but well, yeah, just Batman. I just remembered from last week that nobody ever uses the word Batman in that summary. So that's. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, but here, the thing that I'm, I was kind of wished was a little bit of sexism in there. You know, I wish you had called her a female employee, like you know, <laughs> Ben, gotta, ben gotta uh, Shapiro's doctor a, wife, a sexy lady. Yeah, uh, because I don't think if you, I, I feel like you could show this to someone and be like, they'd read it and be like, wait, an employee of the latter becomes the Catwoman, but a man yeah, right. works for him. Of course, it's business. Why would he have a female employee to be Catwoman and they have to the be most, like no, no no it's a female employee oh I see now I, I get it the most important thing about this character is that she works for a man absolutely and I mean she can't even get a man to save her life I love <laughs> I I think this movie I mean well you know Diggins what did you think of this movie that's true I get to go first um this movie is really weird and I can't decide if it's weird in a way i like or weird in a way i don't like because it's kind of both i guess like there's parts of this movie that are that i just find kind of gross i mean both like weird moral stuff like the the kind of 90s feminist bits from men that end up seeming really sexist when you look back at them now but I, when i say gross i just mean like sometimes the, the danny devito is just drooling black goo when i'm like i don't want to look at this this is gross <laughs> yeah love yeah. it um i think i like that it's such a weird distinctive obviously a tim burton movie um like much more than the last one this feels like a tim burton movie where he was told he had to use Batman and not Tim Burton made a Batman movie, which <laughs> yeah. And I will say, uh, I have definitely seen both these movies before. I I know that for a fact. But when we watched Batman last week, I had no memory of anything in that movie. It was all new to me. Uh, but when we watched this one, there was a lot of scenes where I was like, oh yeah, I, I do vaguely remember that from when I was a kid. So uh, it. Uh, if that means anything, I guess it's that it is more distinctive, which is something I'm always a champion for. So I got to I got to give it some praise for that, for being so stylistic and distinctive. I'm not sure it all 100 percent works because just like the last it goes even harder than the last one on being this weird fusion of like serious, mature Batman movie and like 
total camp uh, go- clown goons and penguins with bombs strapped to their backs. And I just don't know that that fusion totally works here. Uh, same in the same way that it does work later in uh, the animated series, which again uh, is perfect. And I love. <laughs> so yeah, I guess overall, I do like it. Uh, I can understand if someone doesn't like it because it is this weird like 90s movie artifact that has a bunch of quirks to it. And also, can I just say, love Christopher Walken. Not good in this movie. He's so what? dull and wooden. He's, he's wonderful. Terrific. Nah, yeah, he's not very good. But other than that, uh... Overall, I like it, and I appreciate that it exists as this weird, horny artifact. Mm. <laughs> horny is a good word there. Oh, horny this movie is so word. horny. It's it's, it's absurd. So horny. That was one thing I had no memory of. I'm watching this, so I was like, I watched this as a kid? Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be pretty hard to just kind of be like, what are they doing? I guess they're just, like, you know, they're, they're wrestling in there. That's She just wants to wrestle everybody. The penguin must want to eat these people, because he bit that one guy's nose. <laughs> Well, I mean, that that is true. He kind of does. I love the... <laughs> I think everybody in this movie... I mean, well, okay. Who, DJ, you go next. What did you think of this movie? So, I... I'm like half with Diggins, and maybe I'll be half where you are. Maybe I'm just half... What uh, a shock. Uh, on, on an island. I... <laughs> hate you. Um, I... I did not really care for this movie. I... I get what you're saying, Diggins. Like, I appreciate for the swings that it took, but I think ultimately for me... It's it was a lot of misses. The see the first Batman, while like weird and this you know very specific Tim Burton artifact, at least felt concentrated in its weirdness. It's like we got this weird Bat guy, and it's like this weird Joker, and it's gonna have a love story, which you know like maybe it's kind of typical, and you know a, a lot of these beats will feel familiar. Whereas like this movie, it's like everywhere. It's like we got weird penguin people, we got weird cat people. Um, you know, there's that weird bat person who you know and love. We got, oh my god, we have weird rich people in wigs, and it's gonna be so weird. And I just, for me, I just, uh, yeah, I, 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 it was, it was too weird for me. I think, you know, love Tim Burton, love Batman, but this one was just kind of a miss for, um, for good old DJ. Um, I wouldn't say it's bad. I just didn't particularly care for it. Um, also, like. At least with the first Batman movie, you know, kind of, like, get, you know, what's going on with, like, character motivations and, you know, all, like, all those different things. But with, like, this one, it's very much, like, from scene to scene. I'm like, what, what, what is this character doing? And, like, why are they on screen? And what are they trying to accomplish? Like, a lot of those vibes. But, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah, I would say I don't think they 100% nailed down uh, Catwoman's motivations from scene to scene. Uh, I think with everyone else... I get it, even if it's a little fast and loose sometimes. But with Catwoman, I have a hard time understanding what she wants in any given scene. Yeah, right? It's like revenge, kinda, or whatever. But yeah. But also, I hate Batman for a little bit in the midpoint of this movie, I guess. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's fair. I mean, he doesn't want her to get revenge, kind of. A little bit, maybe. He doesn't really even know that she wants revenge until the end. He's just like, uh, don't blow up stores i think that's bad yeah he wants to protect the property you know he, he does want her to specifically do emphasize all the property damage he saved later <laughs> yeah that's where that part's great uh i mean they she really did do a lot of property damage real cool whipping and stuff i mean i do feel mm-hmm. like if you went to if you went back to work and you were like this was a lot of property damage but i mean there was definitely a lot of style going on here so i can't <laughs> completely hate it you know Man, did she whip the heads off those dummies in one take? I gotta respect that. Exactly. And she's like, she's got a very, I don't know, it's tough. It's hard because we've done this a lot since, like, the what the Catwoman is. Even, like, I mean, most recently, besides when Catwoman is in the Batman movie, but even outside of Catwoman's, just like, you know, she's Cruella a little bit. This is, it's just a very, I don't know, it's an interesting little trope, um... That I don't think necessarily started 100% here, but this was definitely the first big one that I can think of. And I mean, this movie was just an absolute, like, this was, the Batman movies were some of the first real big gigantic blockbusters. Uh, So this is definitely a place where a lot of people are introduced to it. Um, It's probably the worst Catwoman. I don't know. I, the more I go back to it, the more I like. 
Oh, no, no, no. I guess, yeah. Well, that's not Catwoman. That's Patience Phillips. This is Catwoman. I think this Catwoman is pretty okay. But I think Anne Hathaway's Catwoman's a little bit more kind of something, like concise. There's like a, a character there. So yeah, it's more of a character. Yeah. I, I think is like the most important thing. It's more, right? of, a, more but, of a coherent not a character, character is what I would yeah, say. She, this, this Catwoman's got a lot of style and a lot of exactly. things to hang your hat on. And like Michelle Pfeiffer is is doing stuff. But when you sit down and think about it, it's like we were saying, what did that character want? It's not very clear. Yeah. Uh, I will say this movie's great and you're both wrong. Well, DJ's a little less wrong because he kind of agrees with me, like you said. But this movie well, is wonderful. I'm the one who said he likes the movie. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no, 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 I actually, I, I thought you were going to come down harder on this movie. So I'm actually on the <gasps> island of, I, I'm the closest to this movie's bad. So I agree half with Dickens and half with myself. Ha ha. Ha ha. I think, well, now D- DJ has, like, he has multiple, you know, he has a supervillain identity that, so, because DJ can't fully have, you know, he has to have right. half of another opinion, so he's, he's like, he's, he's getting split, split right down the center. He has to end all of his relationships, tell Michelle, you can't be married anymore because yeah. you have two minds about things, and she can't accept the part of you that uh, doesn't like Batman Returns. He is... <laughs> Yeah, DJ has become the bat. Next week, we're going to give him a little, I don't know, like, what is it? Like, some sort of, like, African statue thing? <laughs> that? That's yeah, like a some thing. weird colonialist stuff, actually. Now, going back on it, if in modern times, somebody, some reporter did an expose on all the weird shit that Bruce Wayne has in his mansion, oh. they'd be, there'd be reports like, Bruce Wayne should really return those to the countries they were stolen from. Oh, excuse me. I'm talking about Batman Forever, the third of these, where um, Chase Meridian gifts Batman a little, I don't even know what it is, some sort of like, you know, indigenous little like puppet thing that's split in half. And it's like, this represents duality, much like you, a duality man. Yeah. Okay, see, yeah. uh, Unlike you, Dando, I don't have Batman Forever playing at all times (laughs) in my head. It's a mistake. It's great. Uh, Or on the second screen. But yeah, no, this movie rules. Uh, I like it. I like it. I think it's better at being this movie. Like, I think this is a better version of the last one in every way, except for, well, no, I don't, I mean, it doesn't have Jack Nicholson, but I think this version of the Penguin is interesting enough that it's like as interesting as Jack Nicholson's Joker was in in terms of just like being an engaging presence. I, I think you're right. I think this movie kind of has a little less color as a, as an artifact of like, the Joker was colorful, so that almost fought against Tim Burton's natural instincts of everything is black and gray. But this one, it's like the villain is black and gray man and black and gray woman, so we get a lot more of that. And even when he has a little circus, it's also mostly black and gray guys. Um, but yeah, this movie's funny. It's it's weird. It's dopey. It's great. I think Christopher Walken's good in it. it in terms of really? just, yeah, I think there's a there's some small things about Christopher Walken that he does that I think are pretty fun. I love the scene where he kills her and almost like doesn't do it. You know what I'm talking about? He That's pushes like her the out the one window. Time in the entire movie that his facial expression changes. Yeah, and it's just a, I I think it's I think the thing with Shrek in this, and for people that haven't seen it, his name is Shrek. Uh, he is playing my That's he's playing Shrek. like a. Yeah, a Shrek-like ogre man. Also has like a little <laughs> son who... Is that an actor doing Christopher Walken? Or is that Christopher Walken's actual son? Because I, I could be convinced it's his it, real it son. Is, it is an actor trying to do a Christopher ah, Walken impression. Man. And ending up somewhere halfway between Christopher Walken and Vin <laughs> Diesel. <laughs> yeah. It sounds yeah. so bizarre. If that character had more lines, it would be the only thing I could think about in the entire movie. It's amazing. Uh yeah, I love that guy. So I don't know. I like it. I think I think Penguin is great. I do think this movie is I don't know. It's cool. It's pretty cool. I like that it's Christmassy. I think like like you're like even Hawkeye and and definitely like Iron Man three kind of use that when it's convenient this movie is pretty much always a christmas movie uh which is nice um i love it when a super villain runs for mayor i think that's terrific so i like that they did that here and yeah i love all of it it's a perfect movie next perfect movie it's yeah. far from perfect it's perfect it's i mean like it's i think a very it's a very interesting take on the penguin is what i'll yeah, say yeah 
it's different. It's got the bones of Penguin, kind of, in that, you know, kind of rich weirdo who kind of looks like a penguin. I don't know if this is Penguin's, if this version of Penguin had existed ever before. I don't think so. I think it it was completely made up for this movie. I do want to say real quick, um, I perpetuated a myth last week that I want to correct real quick. Uh, Tim Burton never said that he has never read a comic. Um, He said, I don't read comics as in I don't regularly read comics. It, it, as a snippy response to Kevin Smith implying that he sold his ending to uh, Planet of the Apes. Uh, oh, and then Kevin funny. Smith kind of blew it up as like, oh, he doesn't read comics. That explains Batman. Well, I mean, uh, to be fair, if you don't read comics every week constantly, you're not a real comic book fan, you know. That's true. That's why I'm not a real comic book fan. Exactly. Um, Nobody is except for who I decide is and isn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's how it works, yeah. The yeah. people who are the biggest fans get to decide who are real fans and who aren't. Uh, and that's exactly. a perfectly normal and healthy thing that is totally fine. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, so he he never said that he never read a comic. He has read some Batman comics. He had some visual styles from Batman comics in mind when he made the movie. Uh, however, I would believe that he has never read a Penguin comic and just heard the premise of a villain named the Penguin. Yo, and was like, well, let's dog. cobble something together here. Cobble, Ooh, cobble, cobble yeah. pot, yeah. cobble yeah. pot something together. See, it's yeah. it's yeah. funny because it's like he got the really the two basic parts of Penguin right by the end of the movie, kind of like weird looking. That's fa- that's always part of it. Not necessarily like Monster Man, but not like weird looking, but like you know, not well, handsome man. like Bruce Wayne, fat little Penguin Man. Yeah. And uh, and wears tuxedo, so penguin, and then um, and then obsessed with birds as a part of his like deal, and how he solves problems is always not always, but frequently bird things. Um, and part of Gotham old money. However, it not really though, but kind of. It's weird because while he is that in this movie, might as well not be, you know? Yeah, like. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how to rewrite this story with like, um, uh, like either removing Catwoman or Max Shrek or even the Penguin. Honestly, I'm like, I want to do this movie without the Penguin. I think I want the movie without Catwoman. I like her in this, but I think she's the part of the movie that feels the most out of place to me. Did and this? Yeah, I get start. it. Fights with the themes that the other ones do, kind of okay. Did this start the trend of superhero movies that have one too many plot lines <laughs> going on? Um, I mean. You could say that. However, what else came? I mean, Superman 3 kind of has that, right? Like, is that's the one where there's two Supermen, but also Richard Pryor is trying to make a machine that eats people. Not like make a machine that eats people. There's a lot going on in Superman 3. But yeah, this might be that. I think the problem is it's all interesting. This doesn't work. Not like it's all interesting, but it's all... There's two stories, right? You have the Penguin Max Shrek story and then the Catwoman story. And I think both of those are interesting enough to keep your attention. And in a lesser movie, in, say, a, I don't know, Amazing Spider-Man 2, you have, like, the Harry Osborn story, which just isn't that interesting, and the parent story, which just isn't that interesting. So, like, you do find yourself going, like, can we get to the parts of the movie that are good? But it, with this, for right. me, I was just like, yeah, I don't so know, more Penguin, cool. The end of the movie, the, when it's <laughs> over and the credits are rolling, that part of the movie? No, 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 Paul Giamatti and the Rhino, Rhino Underwear Oh, man. yeah, no, you're right, I'm sorry. Did you see there were rumors, that not rumors, uh, stories were coming out recently, he was going to be in that movie, kind of, but then they didn't end up doing it, but, like, they had talks about him mysterio and venom both being part of the finale in some capacity i think the mysterio was going to be from another universe where he was actually a sorcerer too i thought i remember yeah reading something about how like they were they were in talks to have paul giamatti come back and do a real sinister six but that he was too busy which is the biggest crime in the history of cinema i'll be i'll be honest it's why no way home is a bad movie yeah i think i i think everyone should take their (laughs) money back or something Hashtag release like the COVID they got back too. You got COVID from it? Just take it back. Co- take it back. Give it back. You know. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't cough in your movie theater. But I guess somehow give the I don't know. But um, you guys, this movie. Well, I okay. So it's about the penguin mostly. Mm-hmm. But Catwoman's there I mean, too. Yeah, it is about the penguin. We open the movie with it being about the penguin. Yes, ostensibly. Now, what's his deal? 
Great question. He was raised by penguins in well, the sewer. Before that. Oh, oh. So, yeah, he's he's born to a uh, billionaire class of family, but he's deformed and eats cats. So the family's like, we can't have him. Now. Yeah. He's, de- well, he's for- deformed and eats cats. First of all, DJ, uh, again, it was the 90s. The idea that someone would have a billion dollars was ridic- was seemed ridiculous. <laughs> How could anyone have so much money? They would probably have been called millionaires if they were ever given a number. That's true. It's true. It's true. I mean, he was. Um, there, I feel like there are five or six families that come up every so often in in the Gotham verse that are like the richest family in Gotham besides the Waynes. And they're they're usually up there um, like when the movies a, are good. A, an aristocratic New England family, you know the type. Yeah, exactly. Waspy. Uh, although you know, I don't know what because it's Paul Rubens is his dad, right? It's like. Pee Wee Herman in this movie? Yes, he is. Really? And I believe Damn. he even came back for Gotham to be Penguin's dad in that, too. So You know, you know who was supposed to be Penguin's dad in this movie? It was me. Oh. I would have been three. Yeah. Uh, they couldn't that. get me. I was busy. Yeah. You no, were too busy it? with Sesame Street. Yeah, That's right. Um, yeah, I was too busy being Elmo's dad. Uh, no, it was uh, Burgess Meredith, Penguin in the 60s <gasps> show. Oh, what happened? Did he die? He he got sick and he just... Ah, damn it. That would have been great. Although, yeah, Paul Rubin's also fun. Um, I don't know. Would you guys like Pee Wee into that sort of thing? Nah. That do it I don't for really you? remember watching Pee Wee as a kid, other than the movie, which I do remember liking. It's, it's tough because I think it's fun. What they're doing with it is fun, but I just, it missed, you know, I kind of missed it, you know? Mm-hmm. But, like, I can appreciate it as, like, I think I see where this was interesting for people. That and Ernest, I think, are the two things where I'm like, I, I, and I look at that actor and go, like, he's great at that, whatever that is. Not for me, but good for him. Uh, and apparently, uh, the wife in this movie, uh, also a Pee Wee character from Pee Wee's Big Adventure and stuff, named Simone. So, huh. the- you yeah. got the whole playhouse. Yeah, I got Man. the whole, and the chair was in there, probably, probably the doctor or something. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, they do yeah, have the Stuart you, Lancaster. Who's this guy? Yeah, if you freeze frame the this opening scene uh, with <laughs> the Penguin's parents, you can actually see all the Pee Wee's Playhouse furniture is in their like study. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, yeah, it's a wild thing. Um, we should do one of those, maybe one. Day. I've, you know what? They made a new one for Netflix, right? At some point? Did they? Did they really? I think so. Yeah, I think they made another one. Uh-huh. I know he was on Comedy Bang Bang as Pee Wee, and he was cool. I liked that. I enjoyed that. So, I don't know. Maybe he's awesome. I feel like I hope people don't have this problem with, like, a Mr. Bean, where you can't just watch that and go, oh, that's amazing. All, like, for, you know. Because you think about how he stole that guy's girlfriend. Which guy did Mr. Bean steal the girlfriend of? Uh, Some comedian. I forget his name. Oh, like in real life? Yeah, in real life. Oh, well, I mean, it could be anybody. He's Mr. Bean. He is absolute, like, he is royalty in England. They love him. He is what Sinatra was in, like, New Jersey in the 30s or 40s. Just, like, the coolest guy that ever lived. Uh, and he should be. He's amazing. Where was I going with this? Oh, yeah, Pee Wee's in it. So he has a baby. Yeah. Yes. A, a newborn baby with the strength to, to rip apart a cat, which is, frankly, incredible. That should have been the giveaway. Yeah. Well, okay, is the mom having sex with the penguins? What's going on there? <laughs> How do you get this baby? Well, it it just is like a deformed baby, right? It's like the, whatever, the hands are like a little fused together. Like, you know, I don't know how much like mm. penguin this is like. It's not like he has like a penguin-based disease. But again, is when for first born strong enough to bodily lift a cat through the bars of the cage they keep him in and tear it to pieces? Good question. Uh, yeah, it's a strong baby. I don't know much about babies, honestly. I see babies in real life, and I go like, "What's up, baby?" And that's about as much as I know about babies. Uh, a newborn baby is like barely strong enough to lift its own arms. Yeah, like newborn babies are weak as fuck, but flexible. Well, how old was little penguin when he was in the? Like, how long we, was we he in that crib for? We don't. Yeah, we don't know. Like, what if he was like a three year old yeah. in that thing? What if they just like kept because it was a big cage. Could have been, you know. Yeah. So it's just we see like the night of the birth with the mom screaming and the dad mm-hmm. with a worried look on his face, and then the next thing we see is them staring out the window and the baby's in the cage and kills the cat. Yes. So yep. it's implied that that's not long after, but I guess it could be any amount of time, really. But like, okay, so what's going on with this guy as a baby? Probably, do you think he has flipper feet, right? And like flipper yes. hands. 
And he's got, yes. Yeah, we see the flipper hands later. He's definitely got those. What else could be? Like white skin, maybe? Big nose. Black Big drool. Like eating fish. The drool. Yeah, the drool is good. I hate the drool so much. I can't stand looking yeah, at it's it. It's awful. I love it. Oh my god, it's the best. Um, it's just gross. Yeah. Like, he probably didn't look like a penguin. He probably just looked like a baby. Because, you know, penguins looks like a penguin in relation to people. But, like... Babies aren't tall, usually, so a short one doesn't look that weird. Right? I don't know. Maybe uh, it was a real I mean, fat you, baby. Maybe that was oh, why she was maybe. screaming. Does he have, like, pointy teeth in this? I can't remember. Yes. Uh, no, just like, no, he doesn't have pointy teeth. He's just, like, yellowed teeth. I'm pretty sure his teeth are pointy. Remember he bites that guy's nose? I, yeah, yeah, but actually, I don't think he has, like, I don't think he has, like, V-shaped teeth. I found a clip. They're on the uh, jagged side. I wouldn't say they're, like, shark man teeth, though. Yeah, they're not, like, fangs, um, but they're pointy. But that could also be a, you know, product of him living in the sewer forever. And then, like, a lot of these things, like, his, like, skin, that could be a sewer thing, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, the, the, the hair, uh, probably the rotted teeth and all that. Yeah, that's... That's all growing up in a sewer, I would imagine. I I have a lot of questions about the sewer growing up, but uh, if you, I'll, I'll yeah, that's, have that's most of it. The, Just the those parents are bad; they're bad people. Yeah. So so he's, they like. Yeah, what was that, Dickens? His pa- oh, no, you go, you go. We're probably about to say the same kind of thing. Well, I was just going to say, so the, the parents decide to, like, baby Moses his ass by, you know, taking his crib and just, like, chucking it in the water, oh. like, 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 a little, like a little creek. Oh, they, they're not baby Mosesing him, DJ. They are trying to murder this child. They would no, like they, him, they to him to They want him to lead the Israelites out of... Um out of Gotham like, City or something. Moses' setting parents, up for destiny. Moses' parents put him on that river so that he wouldn't be killed by the Pharaoh. The Cobblepots that here would true. like their child to be dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so so bad analogy, I, I guess, for the reasons. But, you know, you, you get what I'm saying, right? So they're just like, by, we're baby murder. So he goes into the sewer. Right, right, right. Yep. And he, he finds penguins down there? Am, am I to believe... I th- that is the proceedings. Yeah, I think in this like Gotham Central Park that they have dropped him into is there's a zoo in it, like in New York Central Park, mm. and it just yeah, this yeah. river, the little stream they dumped him in, happens to lead to the penguin enclosure of the Gotham Zoo. Somehow the penguins don't escape because I don't know. Sure. Yeah. So I mean, I guess that's not the most important question I have. It's really all the other ones, like. You know, how do you, what do you eat? How do you not die? You eat penguins, um, I feel like know, it's the easy the, answer. <laughs> I guess it's fair. But, like, depending on the age he was, you know, this was done to him, like, it's not like babies are great at taking care of themselves. Like, he yeah. definitely would have died. One, and, like, one look, might suggest that babies are entirely incapable of caring for themselves. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. And look, I'm not here to nitpick, um, unlike a, our podcast, mostly nitpicking. I'm not here to nitpick in this, like, superhero movie with, you know, Batman. Like, oh, what? This is so unrealistic. But I feel like our starting point here is bullshit. <laughs> like, I feel like that is our starting point. Well, it's weird, right? Because he's a Remus and Romulus kind of raised by wolves kind of thing. Except he's not really raised by the penguins, it doesn't seem like. Or if he yeah, is. Yeah. Later like, we find out that he was, you know, carnival freak show circus. Yeah. For a while. Yeah. And that's fine, too. I, I really do think, though, watching this movie again, I'm like, there shouldn't be a circus already again. We shouldn't have bad clowns again. We yeah. Just did it, really, that. it really feels like they wanted to do the Joker again, but yeah. they were like, either Jack Nicholson wanted too much money or. Or they decided they couldn't justify bringing him back. So they just picked another Batman villain at random and made it work as much of a Joker thing as possible. Right? It's so weird. And it's funny. Part of what's funny about it to me is like Joker is a clown. And like Mm -hmm. sometimes he's got like circus friends, but not really like he usually just has clown friends. Everybody around him is some sort of clown theming. Uh, you know, like goon or clown gimmick, like a jack in the box or a gumball machine or whatever, like just kind of silly things. And penguin is just birds always, and they both kind of maybe has oh, what? What other movies has he made with with clowns? Tim uh, Burton. Dumbo is <gasps> kind of like a circus. Oh, yeah, thing. yeah, Dumbo. That's true. 
Maybe he's just always wanted circus, to make Dumbo. There's a whole circus section of Big Fish. That's right. It's true. Yeah. I, I feel like Beetlejuice Holy also shit. has a circus, but I can't remember where or like how. But I could just be confusing it with parts of this movie. But yeah, I feel like it's just like Tim Burton just injected circus into whoever. Like if the Riddler was in the next one and it was the Tim Burton joint, he would have been some sort of fucking circus fortune teller or something like that like so maybe it's good that they dragged him away from these i mean nightmare before christmas isn't like a circus but it's not not a circus either it's like circus ish a a lot of the hall there's a there's a character who's just a spooky clown like that's the whole thing yeah can i I just there might even be like a second spooky clown there can yep. I just say, both scores by Danny Elfman, so it's not like outright theft mm-hmm. or anything, but there there are parts of this soundtrack that veer dangerously close to just being making Christmas. <laughs> I mean, l- yeah. but listen to any Danny Elfman, like there are parts of Avengers that are like, whoa, am I in a different movie? Like everything he does is like one thing. I know yeah. they all have a similar vibe, but I mean, there's parts in, I, especially the opening action scene, where it feels like he changed a single note of Making Christmas, and that's what the score is right now. I mean, this came out before Making Christmas, so maybe he was inspired. Maybe. That's true. I mean, before, maybe before it's before the other way around. Christmas. Maybe when it came time to <laughs> do Making Christmas, he had no idea, so he just cribbed his old Batman score. Or maybe he wrote all of the... Well, wait. Making Christmas... When was that? It was a year later, 93. 93, okay. So maybe he wrote that, and then, like, maybe he wrote Making Christmas and all that stuff, and that just takes longer to make, and, Mm -hmm. he like, maybe he's had that going for a while, and then he was like, oh, you know what? I already got this song. Let's throw this in the Batman, too. I'll change a couple of notes. Like, I feel like that's probably where we get this from, because Making Christmas feels like a passion project, and this feels like a, like, oh. A billion dollars again? Yes, please. I will take oh, your money you. to make more Batman. Not that he did a bad job, but yeah, it is. I mean, he has one speed, too. Like, it's not like he's not the most, you know, like, what's the word? Derivative? Yeah, of himself, kind of. Not in a bad yeah. way, though, but he's got a style that is his style. So, like, I'm, I don't know. There's stuff in Edward Scissorhands and Beetlejuice that sounds like this, too. Like, if any, and there's, we're kind of gone are the days of the famous guy like this, you know? The John Williams and the Danny Elfman and the mm-hmm. super yeah, it's music. So we still have our, our Ludwig, Hans Zimmer. Ludwig Göransson. Who's that? Uh, he do, uh, Ludwig Göransson. I think it's Ludwig. Uh, he does a lot of uh, uh, film scores. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, he does a lot of the uh, Christopher Nolan movies. He did the Creed movies. Oh, uh, yeah, that guy's good. Uh, he did Black Panther uh he's done a lot of stuff yeah i thought somebody else did black panther the score it was different um the score the album uh, things were different yeah i thought like kendrick lamar and i thought kendrick lamar also did the score i maybe they both did i don't know oh no you're right it's ludwig oryxon yeah interesting so yeah i guess like those people exist but they're not like i wouldn't say danny elfman's like a household name but i don't think you would hear it I, i think there were people and I think part of it, too, is like John Williams worked with Steven Spielberg. Danny Elfman worked with Tim Burton. So they were just like, I don't know, just so ingrained in the auteur uh, aspect that it was just like mm-hmm. a brand. I don't think they're, uh, Ludwig Oryxson is quite a brand yet. He's a brand in like film critic circles. He's not like a household brand. Oh, so Diggins knows Yeah, who he we is. haven't really heard of him well, yet. Well, clearly, he is kind of I know who Ludwig Göransson is since I brought him up in this podcast. Yeah. Right, but like, it, like we don't mean you, Diggins. We mean Diggins in like the more general sense. Like, oh, all the Diggins is out there. I'm trying to all think. The, know what we mean when all we the say pretentious that. fucks of the world. Hans <laughs> exactly. Zimmer. Exactly. Hans Zimmer's probably the last time we've gotten one of those. I would say. Yeah, I think so. And it, who who does? That's who does Nolan stuff, right? Yes. Is Hans Zimmer well, and Hans like Zimmer Pirates and of the Caribbean kind of trade off? Yeah. Who did? Who did? Uh, Tenant. Ludwig Göransson. Hans Zimmer really, yeah, did okay. something else that was equally way too loud that year. What was it? Uh, there were like two movies of last year or two years ago. They came out and they were both way too loud. And you were like, one of those is definitely Hans Zimmer, but that wasn't the Christopher Nolan one. And it was like, mm. yeah, but that one was the Hans Zimmer one, was it? Um, anyway, he also did um, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Remember that? Oh. That oof. one where the bit's like, I am Electro. I'm bad in this movie. Oh, God. Him. Spider. Man's the man I'm gonna kill. Everyone's yeah. looking at me weird. Spider Man, I'm mad at him, man. Oh, you know what he did? Man. He did Dune. Sp- Duh. 
Hans Zimmer did that oh. the other movie from last year that was way too loud sometimes. Dune. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not that that's not on purpose. Anyway, the movies are good. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, this movie rules. <laughs> Penguin. Yeah. I don't know. So Penguin, I don't like that he's a circus. What other movies is, are going to be circus movies in the future that Danny Elfman will do? Let's pick pick some right now. Oh, God. How am I going to know that? I don't know. What what other circus things are there in I pop mean, culture? All the Tim Burton movies we already said. Yeah, like... Is that like upcoming projects? Big Fish 2? <laughs> is there like a circus person? Circus, circus, the movie. They made the part of Greatest Bailey Showman movie, 2. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's that's that that would be the other one. There just aren't a lot of circuses. Showman. He's really like done them all. It's a shame. Uh, do you think these uh, guys? He'll do the movie about the great clown Pagliacci. Oh, he really would though. That'd be interesting. Is there ever like an actual murder circus or something that happened in real life? That would be something that would be good for him. The John Wayne Gacy movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Honestly, I, it, it would make sense. Anyway, okay, so this movie. Uh, it's got a lot of circus in it. More circus than you expect. Really also weird to me, the circus is just like a problem that Gotham is dealing with now, you know? Yeah, I like when they open the movie with the clown villains coming out. I'm like, oh, these guys must be Joker fanatics. Right. Yeah. And it's immediately where I went to. But um, not not so much. No. Nah. Different circus entirely. Uh, They're just they just yeah. are some circus guys who happen to like hanging out with the penguin. It's not really a theming thing of his. They just are friends. Yeah. And they also live in the sewer, I guess, maybe. They hang out there with him. I don't know. Did they live there? I don't think uh, so. I think they just hang out with him. Yeah. I have, I like to imagine that at the end of the day. They're like, okay, boss, we'll we'll pick this up tomorrow, and then they all go back to their normal apartments, <laughs> yeah. take off the clown makeup. Yeah, and then they go, honey, I'm home, and then they go, actually, I don't have a husband. I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I actually do that every time I leave the house when I come home. I say, honey, I'm home. Oh, I'm not married. Like every single time, because it's such a funny joke. It is oh, so a it's, pretty come on, joke. don't don't lie. You don't uh, you don't come home. You just kind of sit into your that, apartment day to day to see what happens next. I That's didn't true. say I leave the home every day. I just said whenever I leave the home. I uh, I think it's a good gag. I think she should stick with it. Like, <laughs> if anybody does that in real life, keep it up because it's hilarious. Uh, but we'll get to her in her dating situation because it is complicated. But okay, so Penguin, he is not part of this grime organization. As far as uh, people correct. know. However, he is also a thing in in yeah. like the news. Yeah, in the beginning we see there's a newspaper boy who who is hawking a story about the mysterious deformed penguin monster that lives in the sewers. I have a question about that. Yeah. Is is that thing where like a newspaper boy I mean like extra extra read all about it, penguin man in sewer? Was that actually a thing that happened in the 90s, or was he, like, oh. doing that thing where he borrowed something from the 50s? Yeah, not in the 90s, no. It, it well, was... I literally don't know. I, like, have no idea. DJ, we like, grew up it... in the 90s. Do you remember any <laughs> I paper was, boys? I... He was doing that. Well, that was DJ's I... job on the street. <laughs> on that I was a, apple we, cart. We were babies and toddlers, right? Like, maybe it was they were doing it in 89, but not in 96. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I'm well, like, they didn't have phones or the internet or anything. Like, it's totally possible. You just got newsboys on the street, you know. That's true. Extra, extra. What would they? What would the news stories be? Extra, extra. The president threw up in the other guy. That was that happened right at some point. Extra, the extra. The president got a Dan Aykroyd from an intern. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like to. I, I kind of like to believe that they would do this every day too, with like, like because there were stories like the O.J. Simpson story that just like went and went and went and extra extra. Kato Kalin said that he may have maybe heard that the guy was around or something. Just more details. Oh my god. Um. Yeah, I don't think that was a real thing. I don't think that was ever a real thing that much. I feel like it would get you beat up on the street. You know, people would be it like, was- "Shut up." Kid. It was a real thing that the distribution model of newspapers used to be that they would just sell uh, in bulk a bunch of newspapers to kids who would then go out and sell them themselves. Ugh, it's awful. But we're talking, we're talking like late eighteen hundred stuff here. Gotham by Gaslight, Gotham eighteen ninety eight. 
Maybe that's what extra, this is. Extra, extra, read all about it. Some type of Batman is, is floating around, you know, fucking, if, fucking <laughs> shit up, the asshole. But okay. So my In fact, question. The movie, the movie Newsies is loosely based on a true story. Okay, move on. Is it really? Oh, it's a true story about Batman, who is yep. one of the Newsies in that, <laughs> Christian Bale. That's true. But my question is what is the myth of the penguin at this point in Gotham City? I mean, it's basically the same as like there are crocodiles in the New York sewers, except instead yeah. of a crocodile, it's a fucked up penguin man. But so like people think that there's a fucked up penguin man in the city. He's in the penguin part of the zoo, or at least like that's his, you know, hideout. Uh-huh. Penguins aren't indigenous to Gotham. Don't people just kind of assume that's what it is or something? Like a penguin? Just a penguin? No, no, but yeah. it's like, all right, well, there's a penguin man. Like it would be like, be like if it was like... I don't know. Like, People. Tiger Man lives underneath the Bronx Zoo or, like, sightings near the Bronx Zoo. You'd be like, oh, it's probably the Bronx Zoo. That's where that People guy's who, from. People who work for the zoo, the Gotham Park Zoo, are just going, yeah, uh, our penguin enclosure connects to the sewers for some reason. So people yeah. are just seeing our penguins because they can come and go as they please. <laughs> it's a really bad design. I think they got, like, one big fat penguin that's just, like, the biggest penguin. And everyone's like, no, yeah, you're seeing Jumbo. That's not That's not a guy. We we actually get that a lot. He uh we feed him too much. He's the alpha male. He impregnates all the female penguins or something. I don't know. Oh. I know that's how seals work. Um but yeah, this movie is like it's weird to, here's here's the part of the movie that I found the most confu not confusing, but strange. There is a penguin monster man or something in the streets of Gotham or like in the rivers and people have maybe seen him in the sewer once or twice. And it's enough of a like urban legend that it's all in papers, which is sure. Um but then there's also a crime circus, and the two are not connected as far as most people know. Yep. Yeah. That's weird to me, kind of. It is weird. Yeah. I, you think? Yeah, I guess you think the circus people would be number one suspects for like, hey, there's a lot of crime clowns going on. But again, it's just, it's just gotta be oh, the Joker fanaticism is at it again. Right. Um, yeah, I would say maybe that's why the Penguin uses circus people as his crime <laughs> enforcers because. Everyone just remembers when there was that big murder clown a couple years back and just assume it has to do with that and we'll connect it to him. Yeah, that makes sense. I I could see it being like people would just be like, is the penguin connected to the clowns? They'd be like, nah, that gimmick doesn't really fit. I don't I don't (laughs) think that's a good gimmick. So probably not. Okay, I guess not. He's a. I have a question. I mean, the, Sorry. the circus did have a little penguin boy in it at one point, but that people forgot about that. <laughs> one circus did. I, have a, it's, I don't yeah. I think it's ever made clear that it's this circus. I assume. How many circuses could there be in one city? I guess they travel, but... Yeah, no permanent circuses. Yeah. Except Cirque du Soleil. It's Cirque true. Cirque du Soleil got them. Now with Penguin uh, Guy. I have a question for you, Nando. Yes. So... Like you, you had said uh, earlier, it's very clear Tim Burton has never read like a Batman or Penguin comic or anything like that. That was Diggins, th- but yes, I think. Sorry, d- I bad, was Diggins. saying that I would believe it while correcting the record that I was perpetuating a myth, and he has read comics. Okay, okay. I guess my point is, like, has this ever been a Penguin origin story? Like the parts where he's in the sewer, not really. Usually, I feel like it's okay. just weird little, you know, kid child of rich people that. Uh, wears a top hat and people are like oh yeah top and tails penguin that's it and has a nose and then he goes and does crimes and he loves birds right right like were his parents ever like you suck i mean like we hate you probably but not like a they didn't try to i don't think they tried to kill him i have a feeling they were just mean to him or something right because it's like i feel like I don't know, if you were to ask, and this is, like, weird, but if you were to ask, like, most, just, like, people, like, all right, the Penguin is a villain, right? His his number one thing is that he's got, like, a Penguin aesthetic. What's his number two thing? And it's, like, he's rich, right? Like, that's what I think of when I think of the Penguin after the Penguin stuff. is like, oh, this guy is rich. Yeah, I would say, but, I, I, and I think that's wrong. the Penguin aesthetic, and it's, like, tied together. It's, like, tuxedo. Penguin, money, right, right, right. You know, um, and nose. That's like I think if it wasn't for the nose, the rest of it wouldn't really work quite as well as it does. But mm-hmm. he'd just be tuxedo man. But people kind of go, oh yeah, like a penguin, like yeah. beak. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I really couldn't tell you. I mean, Burgess Meredith also went like wow, 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 
right? This one doesn't really do that. He makes mm-hmm. weird grunts and like noises, but like he's not like a human penguin or like I don't know. I don't know what sound penguins. What sound do penguins make? That's like quack 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 quack. Yeah, I like it. We should just do whole yeah. penguin sounds podcast. Penguin ASMR. <laughs> People would like that. Don't like the Muppets have some penguin friends? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the band uh, has them, right? Like, right. Aren't, aren't they? Um, not the band with with animal, like the orchestra. Is there like an orchestra penguin? I think I might be thinking of the Disney. Ride. I think it. No, well, I think um, in the Disney movie they are also like part of some some orchestra or something. But yeah, I think they yeah. just fill out scenes. Yeah, yeah. Because there's just chickens like as well that are also kind of musical. Usually, well, those are like Fozzies, right? Like or Gon- Gonzo's, Gonzo? but they're Gonzo's also- Gonzo has the Gonzo chickens. is dating one of the chickens, Camilla. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. But there's all kinds of like there's like a stable of chickens and a stable of penguins that both just kind of are there sometimes. I think, think the penguins at one point have like a little tap number, kind of like what's his what's his yeah. name, um, Mary Poppins. Also, you know, oh yeah, pe- penguins can Those dance. Cartoon penguins. Yeah, it's interesting too because in this new The Batman movie, it seems like this penguin will just be a guy who mm-hmm. becomes deformed throughout the movie and turns into a penguin looking dude. You know? Yeah. That- like, he doesn't start at baseline with, I'm the penguin. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah, like, I feel like the thing with Penguin, and I think they get this in the movie a little bit, is he has a big Napoleon complex and kind of like, ah, I'm ugly, no one loves me. Yeah. Like, and this one has that, but I, I feel like Colin Farrell is handsome in the beginning of the movie, or at least at some point, and then becomes homely as a result of explosion or whatever. And- You're saying Batman turns him into the monster. Oh, that would never happen. That wouldn't make any sense. Why would Batman... <laughs> create a villain why would that would that would never happen in fact it must be yeah, something fair. else uh but yeah i think that's it that's probably what happens i, I have another question for you guys kind of related but kind of unrelated all right has dan a- has um gonzo ever gotten a dan Aykroyd <laughs> from the chicken uh I, from I, himself you know. maybe you know <laughs> he's got a he's very flexible because he is a muppet so you can just kind of <laughs> put, all right like, bad question bad question make him into a big i think right. you no know, the answer is yes for sure i Okay, great. I don't remember when that happened, but it's definitely happened multiple times. Um, I think it was the new Haunted Mansion special. Night. If you if you focus on the background, uh, yeah, it's, it's happening <laughs> constantly. Uh, by one of the ghosts, is that what you're saying in the Haunted Mansion? Yes, ride? yes, yes, yeah. exactly. It's always ghosts. That's it's only a Dan Aykroyd when it's a ghost. Exactly, really is. You know. I mean, we'll get to the sexiness of this movie. We could start. We could get there now. Uh, Christopher Walken yeah, is in this as some sort transition. of weird. I don't know what is Christopher Walken's job. What do people think uh, he is? I guess to like, yeah, right. Is he just another Bruce Wayne type? He's like a Gotham business. City, home to two millionaires. He appears to own department stores. Yeah, and also power plants that pollute the water. So I want to talk about Max Shrek's plan. <laughs> okay. I mean, well, before that, I just want to like, what? Yeah, like, what do people like him? They seem uh, to. It seems like it. He, he seems popular. He gets introduced at that speech as. Gotham City's Santa Claus and everyone's cheering. They can like, see his Santa face Claus. though, right? Like they know it's him. Like they're like the scariest man alive. Yay! A man with a really <laughs> ill-fitting wig <laughs> and a cool stripy suit. Lots of like he's just a terrifying human being, and also he's a weird businessman who talks like Christopher Walken. Like I just don't understand if you if you. Didn't have that one scene where everyone's like, oh, my God, Max Shrek, everyone's favorite guy. I just assume everyone hates him, but they love him. He's popular and sweet. Yeah, he, I mean, he just every week is throwing money to people, like literally just like giving money away. Like, oh, Gotham, you love me Work for Joker. <laughs> right. I mean, historically, uh, everybody in New York City, analog cities uh, love the uh, crooked businessman who. Uh, uh, with an ill-fitting hairpiece uh, who <laughs> believes that uh, he should be able to bypass all rules because of who he is. That's true. Mike Bloomberg. Uh, yep. Yeah, just so like I yeah. mean, No, I mean, yeah, it's very... We haven't done much better since the Batman... We, we learned the wrong lesson from this movie, which is not one billionaire, but a different billionaire should be the mayor, though. Like, <laughs> let the other billionaire be in charge. But not the lesson of this movie is don't elect the uh, foul uh, creep 
who constantly sexually harasses people uh, and has a sense of entitlement over his uh, like good birth uh, and you know rich family, but uh, feels like he doesn't get the respect because he's not classically respectable the way the other rich people are. Can you imagine how screwed we'd be if, in the middle of one of the debates, a big clown jumped into the like debate stand, stole Hunter Biden, and like dropped him into the sewer? And then Donald Trump came out, everybody would be like, oh, Donald Trump is a hero. We love him. He probably that would won be- that election. You know? <laughs> Especially if backflips were part of it. I, I kind of want this to happen. Yeah. Has, has anyone tried it? Do you think they do that in debate prep? You're like, okay, we got to be ready in case some guys try to somersault in and steal your baby during the debate. So <laughs> we'll just teach you some kar- easy karate moves, but nothing nothing crazy. Very basic. Yeah. Uh, but Okay. So that's the penguin. Okay, so that's Max Shrek. Let's talk about the thing that you were going to say, Diggins, because his plan is bizarre. So uh, and it he comes has up assist- pretty quickly. He has this assistant, Selena Kyle, who's a big loser who greets the husband that doesn't exist every time she comes home. Uh, <laughs> she goes back to uh, get some files she forgot the night where Penguin's attack happens, and Penguin blackmails Max Shrek into helping him enter polite society, which I right. forget if we said that or not. Yeah, because Penguin has been like, I've been collecting all that trash and sewer waste, and that I taped it all together, so you're fucked. Yeah. He's like the trash man. He's, like, I'm the, He's trash the trash man, man. much like Danny DeVito is in, in, you know, Always Sunny. Oh, yeah. Danny DeVito does this all the time in Sunny. There was that one episode where he just turns into the Penguin by the end and is, like, coughing up black blood. It's great. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, um, it's, so, it's so funny. Anyway, Max Shrek, Christopher Walken, finds her going through the files. Uh, and it turns out she's accessed the, the protected files by guessing his password. And has found out that this power plant Max Shrek wants to build isn't a power plant at all. But would secretly siphon energy from Gotham City and store it. And the reason it would do this is... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yep. What, do you, what more do you That's, need? He would get yeah. some instead of not having I, it. He would have it. I mean, yeah, it's good to have power, right? Yeah. Right. So that you can just keep it in your big capacitors and just look at it whenever you want. That's what energy's <laughs> yeah. for. Yeah. I mean, I do like the idea that he would like steal all the power and then out Gotham City wouldn't have power. And then he'd be like, you guys, you're never going to believe what I just found in the back of my closet. A uh, lots and lots of power. Would you like to buy power for me? I didn't have it before, but now I do. So there's no, there's no way that this would like work out for him. Like, let's say his plan worked and he built the power plant, and he's like, "Yes, all the power is mine now." It, like at some point, they'd be like, "Oh, we're losing all our power to this power plant. Yeah. Let's stop." I mean, yeah, maybe and, he'd sell it. Like, to there's like, no end game with this plan. Maybe he'd sell it to another town, like Bloodhaven or something. I, I guess. I mean, I mean, Gotham should be doing that because they have a surplus of power. Like, they say that a bunch. And that's the part of this plan that I find the most problematic is every time he tells someone the yeah. basic part of the plan that's before all the tricking, they're like, we don't need one. We have all the power. And he's like, no, but maybe more, though. It's, it's insane how yeah. flimsy of a plan this is. But Mr. Wayne, you could never have too much power. Oh, I knew it would happen well, eventually. Uh, Wasn't Christopher sure it would be. Walken. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's I can't believe you're to here. Too much power. Oh, Christopher. Power is something that you need. And having too much is insane. You could you could never have too much power. Well, Diggins, that isn't that isn't Christopher Walken. That's billionaire Max Shrek. Beloved Santa Claus of Gotham City, Max Shrek. Max. Right. Yes, yes. I'm, I give presents to the needy. Yes. Ah, yeah, you ah, threw a couple ah. of presents what? at people. Are you Dracula for a second? <laughs> or the Counts? <laughs> well, Max what? Shrek Present. is a German actor who uh, famously did portray Dracula. <gasps> it's perfect. Hey, is that what they were it's going true. for? In Sometimes this? I slip in and out, you know, but um, it's it's true. Max Shrek, I, uh, you know, I give presents to the needy so people love me. It's, it's obvious. Can't you see it? Yeah, do you think the Gothamites are just like... They, the the Joker broke them, and it's just like, listen, we don't care about your politics. Just throw things at us, and then we'll be happy or whatever. Just got to hey, If it works, it works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I have a question for you, Max. Yes. 
is. Well, I have several, but my biggest one is. Oh, I okay. So you were trying to steal all the power, yes? Yeah, trying to steal, not steal, y- y- I mean, borrow for my own purposes. I would never. I steal mean, we're all friends here, Max. God. We can talk about the plan as if it was. You know, we. I, I actually read stealing. their this documents. Is- this is all a hypothetical conversation yeah. where if you were trying to steal all the power, this is what it would be like. Right, right. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Um, who was going to work there? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked, Nando. Uh, Shrek Enterprises has a whole staff that is, was just off screen for the movie. So, you know, it would just been them. But I have I have corporations and businesses. What You think me and Bruce Wayne just don't have people who work for them outside of Selena, Kyle, and Alfred? That would be ridiculous. But, like, well, you we, know, who would run things? Would those know. people know the grift? Well, we do know that Max Shrek has a many, many very loyal employees in Gotham because he suggested that he could get the vo- the signatures to recall the mayor from Shrek employees alone. That's true. Exactly. Just siphon off some of them, you know, pay him half and go work at the power plant. It's perfect. I mean, the mayor is, is forcing everybody to live in fear, you know. They can't even go outside because of all of the clowns, so I, <laughs> yeah. I get it. He's not a popular the, figure. The clown 19 pandemic because there are 19 clowns. Yeah, 1980 <laughs> clown, 1984 clowns as well. You know, it's just all of those things. We got to cancel those clowns or the clowns <laughs> or the canceling. No, the, the clowns are trying to cancel uh, yeah. <laughs> our normal life and we yeah. have to stop them. It's yeah. cancel culture run amok, really. I think we should teach both sides of clown controversy. You know, the clowns are good. For doing crimes and killing, and also that it's not good that they do it. But we have to teach the clowns neutrally, Nando. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we have to uh, not say anything that would make the clowns look bad, but you don't necessarily want to make them look good either. No, 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 exactly. But maybe you do. It's so fine as long as nobody's, you know, as long as we're all friends, right, Max Shrek? We're friends. What do you think of the clowns? Yeah, we're all friends. Uh, I thought the clowns were, um, you know, a necessary part of Penguin's plan. Uh, you know, I I must say though. Uh, Re- re-looking at everything that uh, hypothetically could have happened, I think a better plan would just for me to have run for mayor. Well, I mean, you are both beloved and also that wouldn't have worked for some reason, you know? You are both beloved, I mean, uh, rich enough to fund your own campaign. Uh, you, you have the ability, apparently, to get the mayor recalled anyway. Yeah, uh, exactly. Even though you do some business crimes, but no kind of supervillain crimes that Batman would really get involved in. So that wouldn't screw up your campaign. Uh, really, I can't see any reason it would work. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be good. Maybe you only work at Christmas. You know, like maybe if the election. Well, oh. I guess the election or the campaign seems to take place during Christmas time. But like, you know, maybe people just assume you're busy making presents because you are the Santa of Gotham City. You know, I am the Santa of Gotham. I have another issue with uh, how people see the the events in Batman Returns. You know, re- really looking at the whole thing. How is this not considered a Christmas movie? You know, Die Hard gets to be a Christmas I movie. I think this is very Iron Man much a Christmas movie. Gets to be a good, you, I, I, it's never talked about in the Christmas movie discussion. Who are you talking you to, this? Max? It's. Uh, I feel like this one comes up all the time as like, Re- well, it's just really? not controversial because everyone knows it. You don't it have to have up, like a bunch of bullshit arguments like with Die Hard. It comes up all the time in Nando's discussions because it's Nando's favorite Christmas movie. It's up there. I was going to say, I've never heard of, you know, this movie being referred to as a Christmas movie. I feel like it. it I think it does. I really? mean, it sh- certainly should be if L- it's not. You should find new friends, of- Max. L- oh, how's this? Listeners of the podcast, tweet at Mostly Nitpicking at whether you think uh, Batman Returns is or is not a Christmas movie. Also... My loyal employees, if you wish to get your Christmas bonus, please, please <gasps> uh, contact Mostly Nitpicking on Twitter with your unbiased opinion on whether or not Batman Returns is or is not a Christmas movie. Do it now I, or else. I've got one question, Max. And this please, is more of then like I a... have to go because this is falling apart so quickly. Yeah. Uh, this cake I'm baking, I'm baking a cake and it's falling to pieces. How's, uh, how's, how are you dealing with Amazon? You know, I'm in a department I, store. Is that a problem? I... Listen, I, I, I don't want to talk too much about it, but uh, let's just say I got a couple friends working on some pretty nifty, nifty experiments. Oh, same day delivery via penguins? Uh, Sending them through the how, sewer how, with the little packages? How about this? How about same minute delivery? <gasps> how about that? Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, know, you like them apples. Pretty good stuff. Um, All right. Do you die in this? I can't remember. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, very much so. Oh, yeah, there's, duh. There's a, there's a horrible about? torn he's skeleton a, at the end. Yeah, he's a big, dumb, electrical burn skeleton. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> very yeah. Very yeah. Tim Burton-esque, honestly. You look at it, and you're like, oh, Tim Burton, really putting your mark on this. He works one of those in every movie. He was in the last one. It's amazing. He, every fucking Tim Burton movie, excuse my language, you got a burnt skeleton that looks like the Crypt Keeper. Hey, you know, now it's just kind of, well, whatever you want. Hey, hey, hey I'm walking here. Hold on, hold on. Nando? Yeah? I think I figured something out. What is excuse it? Excuse me, uh, Max Shrek, could you come over here for a second? Yeah, of course. <laughs> ah, I just tore off his mask, revealing Jerry Seinfeld. <gasps> ah, Jerry Seinfeld? Listen! What's the deal with Max Shrek? Oh, you know he's dead in the movie. Oh, of course no, it's, it's me. Jerry Andrew Seinfeld. Clay under that mask, too. I feel yeah. like here's the thing, Matt, Jerry Seinfeld. I understand why you like Max Shrek. You know? Yeah, he's awesome. You both have little penguin friends, like George Costanza is your Max Shrek, or is your penguin, you know? Mm-hmm. You're Oswald have, Cobblepot. You're Oswald Cobblepot, exactly. You both get kisses from pretty women like uh, Elaine. Who's, yeah, of course. And Kramer is... The stilt guy or something. <laughs> <laughs> trying to, who's, who's Kramer? Is he Batman or is Newman Batman? Because he's your enemy. This makes sense. This is yeah, a good. This go. is a good there bit. Go. Um. Well, listen. When we do B movie, we'll have to have Jan Jerry eventually. We're gonna have to. No, do that movie. thank, thank you, thank, thank you. So, what's the deal? Thank you so much. Uh, you know, it's pretty, pretty good. Uh, oh boy, someone's wow. gotta watch. It. Seinfeld, Jerry, to remember that you are not the one that is Kirby Enthusiasm guy. I mean, you were on it for a while. Listen, what did you think of this movie, Jerry? Because you exist in the real world. You know, you've seen it. Do you like this movie? Batman I, Returns, I, the I, one we're talking about? You probably forgot. Yeah, yeah. I, lo- I, lo- I love I love this movie. I, I, yeah, I love it. I love this movie. I mean, you're more of a Superman guy, but, you know. I Yep. Oh, I gotta go. It's Kramer's coming. Oh, God, Kramer. Oh, no, no don't Kramer. get him on the pod. This Kramer, is no. Oh, no, Kramer is coming in that meme of the, like, red lighting where he tells you something from a horror movie or whatever. <laughs> My favorite one of those was, it was Kramer, and, uh, and it, the lighting was, like, reddish or whatever, and it was just a comedy store. It was like, wish me luck, Jerry. I'm about to go on. <laughs> it's terrible. Um, you guys, let's talk about Catwoman. Oh, guys, I'm back. Wow. Oh, thank God. I, Jerry Seinfeld, dressed as Christopher Walken, dressed as Max Shrek, um, was was here. It was so odd. I think there were some other people that were under there, too, but we didn't really have time <laughs> to rip all Jerry's um, face off. I, but I don't know. I They're all gone now. I had to just, like, make beat them unconscious and then throw them out into the cold harsh snow and then little but penguins I'm, came and carried their penguins bodies will back. Help. yeah exactly <laughs> it's like yeah. a little funeral oh that little funeral at the end amazing <laughs> i might be my favorite like i think that's that stuff like that is what wins me on this movie is just mm-hmm. it's yeah, so it. weird it's so committed to the parts of this gimmick that don't make any sense. They were so saddened by the loss of their penguin. Yeah. I also like that there's five of them. I just, I'm, oh no, there's six, there's six, there's six. I was going to say, where's that fifth one? But they don't really pick him up either. They just kind of push him. They're not even <laughs> touching him. He's just kind of moving <laughs> while they walk. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Do you think he made him practice that? It's like, I'm going to die down here. <laughs> so get, let's get six of you in a line. Made a little harness that had three fishes on each side, and then we're I'm just going to slide slowly into the water. And you guys watch. It's a good plan. Um, let's talk about Catwoman. She works for Max Shrek. Like you were saying, she learns a stupid plan that doesn't make any sense. Um, like, it uh, seems like he could just build a power plant, you know? Uh, yeah. E- yeah. Except for it's a bad... Does. Like, if anything, here's what I think happened. Max Shrek was like, we should ask Miss when he was here, but it's too late. He should... It seems like what happened is he was like, I'm going to build a power plant. And everybody was like... And, and he, like, told that to one person. I'm like, good idea. Maybe his stupid son. And then he went to tell everybody else, and they were like, we already have a power plant. And he's like, I knew that. Duh. I want to build another one. And then he what? had to kind of come up with, for what he would do with it, and then he came up with this crime. <laughs> Yeah, what if what if he's building this power plant that will steal the energy so he can do what he really wants, is to, which is to build an actual power plant? Yeah. I really like the idea that Macy's guy also is like, I really want to build a power plant, everyone. Can we let me do that? Is that acceptable for me? Is Shrek... Because I don't know. Is this guy from the comics? 
I'm not familiar no, with him. He he's oh, entirely yeah. original to this movie. Is he like a play on somebody? I don't think he's, so. I think they really just made him up for this movie. Like he's not okay. based on anything. Except that he, he has kinda, the name of a German actor for some reason. Well, he kind of looks like his son looks like little Donald Trump. Kind of. I couldn't and tell he, if they were doing that. And again, if you combine Max Shrek and the Penguin, you kind of have Donald Trump. Because you yeah. have the the corrupt businessman who tries to strong arm people through permits or whatever. Uh, and then also the the foul politician who says a bunch of uh, rude garbage and desperately craves the respect he believes he deserves from his station. Uh, but nobody gives it to him because he's again a foul little monster. Yeah, who assaults women. <laughs> That's fair. It's weird. It's a strange. Yeah, I wonder. It's strange. Um, I liked. I really do like that scene where he kills her though, and like kind of does that little fake out. It's very. That bit always it, gets me. It's like so cringe though. Like it's it's like oh my god, here we go. Another old movie where it's like guys just going to sexually assault lady and I Oh, I, don't I don't know mean you, that part I, of the fake out. I mean the part where he's threatening to push her out of the window pretty much and then he almost does and pulls back oh, for a second and he's like Okay. What? And he makes a face yeah. and she's like, "Oh my god, you were going to push me out of window." And he's like, "What? No, that's crazy." And then he like does it. But that second where he's not doing it, he makes like a little smile. I love that. It's the one emotion he shows in the entire movie. I, I again it's, have to it's emphasize. Terrific. Yeah. Uh everybody I, should watch it. I love that he sees her like reading through a file in a filing cabinet, which is a perfectly easily explained act. I forgot a file. I was going to get it for the big Bruce Wayne meeting tomorrow. You know, um, yeah. And then for no reason, she just tells him that she read all his secret files about the big crime he wants to do. Yeah, she just can't keep it to herself. Is very, very excited. Yeah, and very excited. She's weird. I don't know if I'd trust her if she was like, "But don't worry, I'm cool." But it does seem like what she's saying is like, "I'm gonna go with it." Like. She's not yeah. being like, I'm going to expose you. She's like, it's good that your plan is to steal all the power with the capacitor thing. So, I don't know. Cut her in. She, I think she, like, literally says, uh, you know, this is just between us or whatever. Yeah. You know, she says she was not going to tell anyone. But, I mean, she's not she's not the sharpest tool in the shed. Ah. As we see from her house, which is 15 things. Let's talk about her house or her right. apartment. So, a little studio. What is it? What's what would you say the theme of this is? It's not a studio. Tim Burton's like, bedroom. Yeah, that's true. She does right, have a bedroom. Jerry. Thank you, Mister Pedantic. Um, it's where I the live neon in light New York. Lives. These differences are very important. Ugh. Yeah, it's true. It's the difference of paying two thousand a month or six thousand a month. I mean, that's she might as well have yeah. a studio though, because she does have a Murphy bed. Which yeah, yeah, that's so weird. She has a bedroom, but a Murphy bed. It's like why? Yeah, I don't know. She needs room for all her dollhouses or something. <sighs> Yeah, so the vibe. It's like 16-year-old girl. Um, I would say much it, well, younger than 16. Sure, 12-year-old girl. Yeah. It, Even younger. Like, I would say like eight. She's very strange. Yeah. It, it, it feels like they wanted to give her every quote-unquote girly hobby imaginable so yes. that later they could be like... Now she's not doing any of those lame, girly things. She's a cool, sexy, leathery cat woman. Right? Ugh. It's weird, too, because this was the 80s. Like, like not 80s. 90s. I mean, she she feels 80s, but this was the, like, 90s. We knew what this character was like, you know? What a yeah. cat lady who doesn't have men in her life was like and, like, kind of, you know, nobody loves her. We knew it wasn't stuffed animals, like, or dollhouses. It's like make her lamer by, like, comparison. Like, it's, like, I can't place what the, like, what this character, like, I knew what it was supposed to be, but, like, the aesthetic was off. Does that make sense? Yeah, I do think it was supposed to make her, yeah, like, kind of pathetic and, you know, not, uh, not adult and sexy like she is later. Yeah. Right. I think it's. Although she has the Catwoman suit from Jump. She pulls well, it out of her closet. She well, has a leather suit. jacket that she cuts up into somehow more material than it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, it's more material, but it's stretched out like an ins- like it. You know, she's Skin got it tight. doing a lot of work. Yeah, I'm thinking like I-, I think it's funny when they have a Michelle Pfeiffer in this role because they do this all mm-hmm. the time with the like mm-hmm. mousy little 
you know, woman from work and then no one loves her or whatever. And like they did this in two Batman movies with Batman and Robin. Um, and then her crazy hair boss kills her and then she comes back all sexy. Um, but with all of those, I'm always like, and with this, the beginning of this, when she's at work, just kind of doing her thing, I'm like, you guys, she's still Michelle Pfeiffer. You guys notice that, right? And then she comes home and it's yeah. dollhouses and I'm like, oh, I get it. Like, I see, I, I do think if, you know, you came home to that, you'd be you like, if you went back to her place, you'd be like, oh yeah, this is something, something's up here. It's like you need to suspend disbelief for a little bit just because, right, it's Michelle Pfeiffer. Like, she's still Michelle Pfeiffer. She's just not Catwoman. But, yeah. I I honestly, if I saw that, I would just be like, oh, you have a lot of hobbies and you like to collect things. (laughs) Is this really any worse than Funko Pops? Let's be honest with ourselves. Great great question. Or (laughs) NFTs. I know. Those are cool. Funko Pops are, you know, those are also cool. We all know it. Um, uh, but how many uh, apes would she? It have? also this movie also does the classic pretending a hot woman isn't hot thing of yeah. giving her mm. big glasses that you're like, oh, glasses means you're nerdy and ugly. Uh, and when, frizzy hair. Oh my god! Oh my how god. unappealing! And it's like glasses look good though. Is the thing? Yeah, that's kind of more stylish now than no glasses. I feel like now that would, yeah. She would get glasses to become sexy Catwoman um, and prove that she is now in on the trends. But also, and I just want to talk about this, she has no, like, husband, right? She keeps telling herself that. Yep. She, and us. And us, yeah. And the cats. But she doesn't have cats. She's an open window that the cats come into her house sometimes. Classic New York City. And she feeds yeah, right. exclusively milk, which is definitely yeah. all cats need to live. Right, DJ? Oh, my God. And yeah. Mando, you both oh, have yeah. cats. Oh, yeah, is it? They fucking love it. Oh my god, yeah. I, he he loves his milk. Sometimes I'll just put a big bowl of milk out, and then just no problems after that. You know that is not just a disaster for his digestive system. I mean, to be fair, um, I never understood where that came from as a thing. I've I've never cats are mostly lactose intolerant. I yep. don't know, I don't know why that is a thing, but it's kind of like the banana peel. People slip on banana peels where it's like one guy did it once in a movie and everyone thought it was what happened. Um, but yeah, I thought it came from Mario Kart. How interesting. You'd think so. Right. Uh, but I was going to say um, the uh, problem with this or the thing about this that I find so annoying is she's like, no one loves me. I don't even have a boyfriend. And then she turns on her answering machine and there's a guy who's canceling a trip. But like that was still a trip she had at before she turned on that answering That's machine. True. Yeah. yeah, she's doing she, fine. Like, and she's and she says something like, "I guess I should have let him win at uh, racquetball or whatever." I think it started with a B. One of those racket sports, which implies that they've been on dates. Yeah, like weird. I don't know, weird, but yeah. She- it's it's funny that like just I don't know all, all these movies with like your female like side character or whatever. Um, especially if they turn to like a confident woman, they can never start as a confident woman. Like, that was never, like, a possibility from Jump, right? Where it's like, oh, yeah, she's, like, a confident woman who becomes Catwoman. Whoa! Well, yeah, DJ, I mean, I if, guess a woman is ju- if a woman is just confident, then, you know, then she needs to be put in her place, and we don't like her. Exactly. That's true. If we see an unconfident woman become confident, then we can be like, uh, oh, this is cool and sexy, but also I know that deep down there's an unconfident woman, so I'm still cooler than her. <laughs> I, I think, too, part of the problem is that they just love origin stories. Like, it, the the movie is only a Catwoman origin story. The Penguin is already the Penguin when the movie starts. Batman's already Batman when the movie starts. And every single Batman, or not every single, but almost all of the Batman origin stories that we see are, like, nerd gets falls into a thing and becomes cool and confident and stuff like it's this, riddler's almost the exact same character just instead of being kind of mousy is like a you know genius but it's the same like he's a shut-in who has no social skills and he has a weird apartment full of bullshit which if we do batman yeah, forever electro, in the future electro they did this with yeah and i think the problem with the batman villains is they have to end up as the most fucking insane thing like they have to have a gimmick that is so bizarre that it makes batman look normal by comparison which means to get there you got to start somewhere really opposite of well like the opposite of that is just the most you know like losery unpopular guy ever but yeah yeah i mean i think when we get a catwoman in the batman and the one that we get in batman uh the dark knight rises 
even you start with Catwoman, she could just be like, yeah, I don't know. I started doing cat burglar crimes. The other problem with this Catwoman is she becomes Catwoman because of bullshit. And that's not usually part Yo! of her deal. Usually she's just oh a burglar who kind of gets that theme because it's something that's popular or like something that, you know, just works All the for cool her. criminals are doing animal themes. So. Yeah, kind of. I forget. I, I think I think in the comics, I, I'd have to look this up. She was a not like a dominatrix, but she like. OK, so I think I think this was something I'd have to. Man, I should look this up. Let me look it up. But here's my here's the gist of what happens in in my head is like she starts doing thievery and at one point has to steal something and does it as like a sexy leather woman to like make it, you know, get into a place or something. And then she just goes with that forever, Um, which is why she has the whip and why she has the like, you know, stilettos and all that nonsense. I think all the cat stuff kind of is part of it, but it's more or less a coincidence built around the the other gimmick, which, you know, not amazing, but um. I also think she's had her origin rewritten several times because that character never makes any sense. But she's another one who, like, just don't give her an origin. It's never worth it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, uh, she's, just, uh, she's just a burglar who dresses up like an animal because that's what criminals do in uh, Gotham. It's fine. Okay, I found it. So, in yes, yeah, so in Dark Knight, you're one, or Batman, you're one, uh, Selina Kyle is a cat-loving prostitute-slash-dominatrix who is inspired to become a costume cat burglar when she sees Batman in action. So it's kind of a confluence of like three things: burglar, <laughs> prostitute, dominatrix, who, who and then they all Batman just go. One? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who, who and wrote, then these. Just tell me, tell me the name of the man who wrote that one. Uh, I'm just looking it up. I think it's Sylvia Plath. It's a very progressive. It's a good. Oh yeah, yeah wow, very okay. very smart. Never written anything about a master race or anything like that. <laughs> um, no, yeah, it's Frank Miller. Famously, I haven't read it, but I know uh, one of the Batman is Batman the Master Race or something. Um, so it's uh, so the re- so it's not that the prostitute part had anything to do with her, uh, you know, becoming Catwoman or like uh, her theming once she became Catwoman. It's just that she was a woman in a Frank Miller story. So, yeah. So I'm looking it up now, too, because they redid her origin again in 1989 to like three years later and her early life was a prostitute before being a cat woman so it's like kind of tragic and she has to like kill her pimp or something it's a oh my god mess yeah Jesus. and that wasn't that wasn't frank miller that's a rare name mindy newell so i don't know who that is but um it's really weird they yeah i think they've rewrote it to post new 52 but i don't know what that one is there's just so much catwoman like lore and it never quite catches it's not good i mean not it's not good yeah like i i love the character catwoman when she just kind of shows up you know so fun like the whip and all that stuff swinging around villains you know, we said this about the Joker last week. It's the mystery is the interesting. Yeah, part. there's some hey, like you Harvey know, Dent. You know what? Where you know what Batman movie series did both of those right? The Dark Knight series. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, I think the Dark Knight never. I mean, the only you know what to be fair, the only one they really did screw up was Bane, kind of by giving him. And I think the Bane in that movie has done a disservice by being League of Sa- League of Shadows guy, and by like having an origin story that is revealed over time but all the good characters from those movies it's just like yeah i don't know i'm ross al ghul i've been ross al ghul in for a while watch out but with like yeah. you know and scarecrow's kind of the same way where he's like doing scarecrow stuff watch out but yeah i'm trying to find i'm looking into like the new 52 origin of catwoman she was the daughter of a of a some sort of like i think mafioso who went into foster care um she was taught to steal to like make a living and then she just started doing crimes after that i don't i don't know but but in the new 52 of her she was also killed and revived by a gang of cats so there you go uh, so are the cats magical like no, they that's imbue... just that's just a thing all cats can do dj little don't yeah fact. you need like 10 of them but yeah oh wow that's so cool. I mean, the sludge in the Gotham City water supply, the cats drink that. Uh, uh, that's why she's feeding them milk, because it's like, well, you can't drink that water. Um, but if they do drink that enough, then they get, like, magical powers. Normally, I'd just say, like, yeah, I don't know. They're licking her, and she's, like, kind of coming back to life. But she does all that weird eye shit, where it's like, 
something's going on here. And the cat's eating her finger. Like, like, yeah. I, I'm like, oh, like, because that is a thing, as morbid oh, as, yes. as this is, like, cats will eat, Yeah, <laughs> like, if, if corpses. I, if either of you die before your cats, th- those cats will be chowing down on your body. And I yeah. have, go for it. Like, I think that's <laughs> great. I... <laughs> I what am I gonna do with my dead body? Put it in a <laughs> like exhibit? No, I don't know. Feed it to cats. No, no, donate the organs. I don't know. That's true. Like, well, I don't. Th- I hope he doesn't get to like the heart. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's mostly surface stuff. <laughs> Unless, can you imagine if they were like he he dropped dead and then what? And then it seems like Warner just went right for the liver, like tunneled <laughs> in. He knew it was there. Something's up. This I think the cat did it. Planned it on purpose. Um, <laughs> Someone check this cat may murder itself. Yeah, he just gave me a look oh, like, wait. no, okay. I think no, you're gonna no. do that, Mortimer. But yeah, I I do. I don't know. Part of me, I think my favorite part of this origin is just she, she's Batman, and she's already doing crimes. That she goes, okay, well, as far as gimmicks are concerned, cat makes sense, and then she just goes from there. Mm-hmm. I don't think the Dark Knight Rises one had a whip, right? I don't remember, I haven't seen she Dark Knight like, Rises in a long time. So she has, like, weird cat goggles. Do you remember that? She has, like, yes. super goggles that go up on her ear and become a cat, which I think is cute. I like that. Um, that's the only thing I think that one's lacking, because I like, I like any character that can swing around and stuff. And obviously the stuff that Michelle Pfeiffer does knocking over those, like, you know, mannequins with the whip is incredible. It's hella fun in the video game. Yeah. She plays Catwoman in the Arkham games. Ex- it's hella fun. Exactly. So, Yeah. I think I feel like I saw a redesign kind of recently where um the uh whip was her tail. Like it Oh that's cool. I think yeah. this was maybe the future one where like the whip connected to her back and she kind of that's how it fit into the costume. And that brings the whole gimmick together really well. Like so I don't know. This one will probably just have a mask and do cat burglaries. I mean like cat burglary is already a thing, you know? Like it's like I'm pretty need... sure that's the whole concept of the character originally. Hey, there's yeah. a thing called a cat burglar. What if we had Catwoman? Right? Well, it's even weirder because I was reading on this too. Her original origin, she was like a... So in the 60s, uh, or not even 60s, like Silver Age, so maybe even earlier than that. Uh, no, about the 60s. Um, she was a flight attendant who got amnesia, hit her head in a plane crash, and then just did Catwoman stuff. That was her, do. yeah, that was her original origin story. Um, but then it turns out she never had amnesia and all kinds of stuff. But um, yeah, she uh, had to break into her abusive husband's vault to steal the jewelry that was hers before she left him. And she loved it so much that she became a professional cat burglar. Love that. I, I like love that. For not her, yeah. Yeah, I like the idea that she's like, oh, this is awesome stealing stuff. Let's let's keep at it. <laughs> Yo, it's fun. Crime is great. I, I love mean, like, crime. Listen, <laughs> you gotta crime the right people, but there's no I like I love I like a good Catwoman story where Batman is fighting someone, like a mob boss, and then Catwoman's just also there stealing from him. And it's like, okay. He usually lets her go, you know, he's like, Don't do it. Where and he's she's like, like stealing is wrong, and she's like is it though when you steal yeah. from this guy and Batman's like, rrr, 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 all Batman. yeah, he does like a Willy Wonka, like, no, don't take their jewels, Catwoman. Oh, she's gone. Okay, well, I guess I'll break all their necks now, throw them through some walls. Yeah, no, please, I'm Batman. I don't kill people. I'll just give them permanent brain damage for the rest of their lives. Yeah, leave them hanging upside down or something. Uh, yeah, I, uh, so what do we think of the Catwoman costume here? It's an interesting costume. A lot of stitching, which, again, very Tim Burton, so uh, on brand. Yeah. Yeah, it's, the stitching's the only part of it that's distinct from your average Catwoman costume, I would say. It's Yeah, the leather's pretty shiny, like very fine. shiny leather. It's fine. Yeah. I feel like the eyes are pretty big, like, yeah, they go up real yeah, high yeah. on her forehead, which I have no problem with in general. It's like a design choice, but that feels a little bit different from Catwoman usually. I feel like, mm-hmm. especially in one of the animated series, it's just like narrow cat shaped eyes, but in this, she has like big old owl eyes. But yeah, I like the I like the design of this costume 
in that I like that she like it, it doesn't feel like it's incredibly like it's it's leather but it's not like the X-Men leather costumes where they're one big giant piece of leather that you can't move it at all you know feels like something you could do a backflip in if you had to uh, apparently yeah. it actually was like a nightmare for Michelle Pfeiffer to wear <laughs> ah damn it come on movies bummer I mean if we want to talk about things that are a nightmare to wear how about that helmet in Batman this this is the fruit roll up helmet where he rips it off his head like a fruit <laughs> roll up, which is absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. That seemed awful. Love it by every metric. Love it. That's I think why that Batman would be can't look up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I like. I. Yeah. I love the idea that he's just like, oh fuck, that's fucking too much shit on my ribs. <laughs> like piece by piece. I. I yeah. What do you think of the bat suit in this movie? It's pretty much the same one as the last one, right? Yeah, I couldn't tell what was different. It's weird. Yeah. It's, it's the, the cartoon abs are a little less ridiculous, I think, in this one. Mm. Um, it's yeah. fine. It's the weird rubbery thing again, which is fine. Uh, yeah. He does a little bit of karate in this and like some fighting some guys. He does a lot of backhand slaps. Yep, he does a sli- lot of backhand slaps. He does slightly more fo- fight choreography than none at all, which was what <laughs> he did in the last movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, he's like somehow less Bruce Wayne in this movie. It felt like. Uh, so, what like, do you mean? The ones- I feel like he's way more. Br- I think they got Bruce Wayne better in this than the last one. I just feel like he's not like there's not as much time spent being Bruce Wayne. I guess. Oh, is, you know, real? I what I meant. Yeah, I feel like the idea of having Bruce Wayne go to a meeting and be like, I don't want to do evil business, Santa Claus of Gotham. Uh, yeah. That felt like the thing that I was kind of waiting for in the other movie or just like some sense of what this guy, what people think this guy is and why I, Bruce Wayne makes sense to people. I got to say, though, in that scene, yeah, he turns down Max Streck. He's like, your plan doesn't make any sense. I, I don't want to support it. <laughs> Great. But then he also says... Also, I've done some original research on this Penguin fellow, and I think he's bad news. A thing that only Batman would have done. So, yeah. why why would he volunteer oh. that information? Especially when there's plenty of reasons to not support Shrek's plan that don't involve your suspicions that the Penguin is a criminal. Oh, Dickens, also- he doesn't give a fuck who finds out if he's Batman. That's true. Like... The yeah. bat signal goes right into his house. I know. He has reflective <laughs> it, mirrors hanging over the walls of Wayne Manor that reflect the bat signal into his house, which is so big and obvious anyone could notice it. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, I, I gotta say, this this movie features a man heroically committed to the idea that ugly people can never be good and hot people can never be bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i uh yeah it's, fa- it's he's right you know yeah he's he, the, the movie bears him out yeah but you know he takes one look at an ugly person and he's like that person must be evil and then he takes one look at a hot person doing murders and is like that person can't be evil <laughs> <laughs> i i think the funny thing about catwoman in this is she's what what do you think her deal is like what's her does she just want to mess up whatever shrek's been doing that's what she she's says. not like a burglar she says she just she wants to get her revenge on shrek but after the first time she does something with that which is blowing up the department store um she touches batman's dick through his suit and then decides <laughs> that getting revenge on batman for some reason is her new goal in life yeah remember when she this touched batman's dick now. yeah, yeah it's pretty she cool. like i guess like right through the bat suit huh yes. i mean grabbing that bat dick that's why he gets the nipples in the next one you know he wants to show the people like this is where else you could touch and here's my butt i put a lot of plating into the butt as also part of it so poison ivy getting any ideas riddler you getting any ideas <laughs> should have checked like the crotch like oh did he put like a little, little like lines there like little indentations like mm. yeah he could get that gun Follow from it. the fucking um from dusk till dawn that's a penis you ever seen that? <laughs> no. Oh my god, really? Oh, I think we talked about that still down the other day. Um, well, we talked about it because I was talking about Quentin Tarantino's sick foot shit with Salma Hayek in that movie. Yeah, so there's just a guy who has a gun that's... I know, like, I know what you're thinking. What? Penis gun? Yes, that's what this one is. And I'm going to put it in the chat. Then now, is this a gun else... shaped like a penis or a gun stored in the penis area? Yes. Oh no. 
I'm, I hate this so much. I'm putting the picture in the chat right. Oh no, sorry. Uh, in the chat right now, and it's a yep, secret. Yep. Like it, it ex- like comes out of a compartment. Yeah, it's awesome. No, like I mean, this guy came to kill vampires or whatever. So like, way to go. But um, that's an extreme yeah. chastity belt right there. <laughs> Batman needs I, it. Get it back. This Catwoman the situation. That, <laughs> Nip that in the bud. The fact that the tumblers are also like that, like the little like revolvers, is is insane. It's yeah, the, great the because they. The tumblers of the revolver are his balls. And they don't go into the barrel of the gun, so what are they doing? Nothing. <laughs> They're not part of the gun. They're just there. And maybe well, hold an extra bullet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um But yeah, so so Catwoman oh. in this is just kind of like a she she fights people who either murder her or don't want her to blow up a store once and have a dick. That's pretty good. Yeah. She also goes back to work, which is fun. I like the scene where she shows up clearly drunk at work or something. Like, not, you know, like, if I didn't know what I was think, like, what her deal was, I would assume that's what happened. But, um, and just kind of tries to blackmail Shrek. Like, that's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah. Would you vote for the Penguin? Would I vote for the Penguin? Well, what's his, what's his um, platform? Clean up the streets, I think, or something. One of the signs in there is like, clean up Gotham. And I'm like, you've that's- seen this guy, right? It sounds like he's a real 90s style Rudy Giuliani tough on crime sort of politician. <laughs> yeah, so broken windows, not. Gotham policing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, okay. So what happens? The thing that I think is so bizarre about this movie is that bit when um they steal the baby and then the baby comes back immediately. It's like a false flag to make the penguin a, a hero. Yeah. Like, and but it's why? very obvious why? that but it's would... that considering he even had a mechanical platform set up to come bring him up with the baby you know yeah it's not like he just has those yeah like i feel like there's i I feel like for that to work you'd need maybe more than 10 seconds between when the baby goes into the sewer and comes out you know like a week of manhunting for the baby and then the penguin comes and he's like i found it but he's just like now we'll give it a couple way everybody do 10 mississippis and then i'll come out with the baby (laughs) and then he didn't even wait that long and everybody was like he saved the baby also, that baby flipped over a bunch of times. I don't think that's good for yeah, babies. That baby's not okay. A baby's got shaky <laughs> baby syndrome. Uh, yeah. But now, Nando, you're forgetting the foolproof part of the plan, which is he has his goon shout, Oh no, the deformed penguin man! Take this <laughs> yeah. baby and leave me alone, please! <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Oh, man. It's so stupid. It's awesome. The movie's good. I don't know anyway, what else. Uh, the, after- the citizens of Gotham are chumps. Just throwing that out there oh yeah I mean, they're all super their brains are all messed up from all the joker gas stuff so they can't really yeah. think straight i don't expect much from Fair. them uh also don't forget that after uh catwoman touches batman's dick the penguin tries to fuck her love that not love that i love the getaway of that scene where the penguin gets on his giant umbrella helicopter <laughs> thingy like <laughs> i like that the penguin as the character before he even meets shrek has committed to the parts of the gimmick that you kind of think Shrek would bring to the table. He's already dressed like mm-hmm. a like a businessman. He already has all the umbrellas. Like, you kind of figure Shrek would go, here, we're going to get you up. You're going to get a penguin. You know, the penguin thing is going to be part of it. We're going to have you wear suits, and you're going to wear these little umbrellas that'll make you look less short, and a big old top hat. But he's already got that, and he has like, an umbrella that shoots, and an umbrella that's a, a hypnotize kind of thing, although that doesn't seem like that's even really what that's for um it's really a gun other umbrellas does he have yeah there's the gun i think he has a sword umbrella at some point yeah he has a sword umbrella he has a gun umbrella and he has the kid umbrella and the flying umbrella yeah those are awesome i hope colin farrell has at least one cool umbrella in this movie he better that'd be, it'd be a goddamn shame if he didn't i don't think Kane's sword would work i feel like it'll probably just be an umbrella gun but I'd like one a little sillier than that, if that was an option. We'll find out soon. But, yeah. The uh, the ladies love the penguin in this. Not really, That's but true. like, he kind of. That, he assaults that one woman. Yeah, and she works for him, so that's not great. But also, even before that, so there's this, there was one thing that really confused me. Remember when they're at the funeral, or not the funeral, the uh, the graveyard when he's going to the visit his parents grave and yeah. there's all the people like looking at him through the gate there's at least two there that are like just like fawning over him it's very strange mm-hmm. what, do, what do people think this guy is is he a just hero because he saved that baby that one time and they all just love him well you know he's like uh he's like a sob story you know he 
he was abandoned by his parents, he's finally come back, and they're dead, so he can't reconcile with them. You know, it's a it's a human interest story. Mm, that's, fr- that's fair. It's cool. And that's why I, he deserves to be mayor. Apparently. He, he who, and, and I guess this goes to the whole, the Gotham City uh, residents are just um, out of their damn minds, but, like, who would vote for a sewer man to be the mayor? <laughs> It's like, oh, this man came from the sewer. It's like, well, he saved a baby. Mayor! Yeah, no one at any point asked the Penguin, like, so what are your qualifications to be mayor? Do you have any experience in administration or governance or politics? Uh, Have you had any formal education whatsoever, having grown up in a sewer with penguins? You know, why should people vote for you besides that there's a lot of crime here and the old mayor is maybe not doing a good job about that? I think it's mostly all the advertising and those fabulous posters that have the one from cartoons drawn on them. And like, that's all they got. I don't know. I mean, maybe he's not a very popular mayoral figure, you know? It's yeah, just... maybe he was never going to win. And it yeah. was just like a flash in the pan campaign that was not going anywhere. Yeah, like when Rudy ran for president a couple times or something. It's just like, yeah, yeah that, that guy seems interesting. Okay, the end. Like, he's not, I don't know. We don't see much of his running for mayor stuff. We see a speech and we see him doing things in like his running for mayor uh campaign office but most of the time his spare time is just batman related stuff yeah like, and, the, um, and the the mayor never really seems that worried about it you yeah know, he just keeps on doing his mayorly duties he has that commercial or not commercial that's what does he do the speech he, he gives that batman hacks i guess that's what i'm thinking of yeah right yeah Pretty sure that's mixing the only... it up with the the joker's bit from the last movie yeah, um, Joker did way more TV stuff. Yeah, they uh, he seals the Batmobile. That's kind of cool. Uh, how? How does he do this? <laughs> His guys have some blueprints, and then they do wire stuff, and then later it seems like it's mostly that little transceiver thingy. Right, but also they already have a, a magic button that makes the shields turn off. I mean, that's what the blueprints were for, you know. But where did they know. get those? Uh, did they get it from Batman? Did they like? take it off of him when he's trying to save the um snow queen or whatever they call that woman i mean i don't think so but does the bat does batman well a definitely not because uh that though we see the batmobile blueprints when he's trying to fuck catwoman and that's yeah. before they kidnap the ice princess well and he has like goons working on that like there's a lot of guys in that room that are just like trying to crack the batmobile code if i remember correctly so yeah so i guess those guys are just really clever clown like uh, circus freaks or whatever they are they were the they were the clown mechanics who kept the clown cars running yeah i don't know it's hard to make those clown cars that all the people fit in you know but did could they have stolen did they steal the blueprints from someone i mean if they did we never see them do it or hear about them doing it yeah it's probably just publicly sourced you know (laughs) yeah batman 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 filed those plans with city hall He's litigious, you know? He doesn't want two Batmobiles running around. What's stopping yeah, someone he, else from just making a car that looks like the Batmobile and driving around, you know? You need, you need those patents. Yeah. You need those patents. But I guess they figured it out. I, good for them. I, yeah, good for them. And then um, the Penguin kills lots and lots of guys with the car. And Batman is, you know, powerless to stop them from all getting mowed down. Seems fun. Yeah. Um, It's cute. Like, where did Penguin get that little, like, like batman car toy right maybe they're everywhere in gotham because the batman is so popular every they're just like making them like get your batman like toy every every, every shopping you know center every shrek shopping mall has one outside and he just grabbed one and you know rigged it a little bit to be driven or to so be like that, a re- remote thingy in that scene where he's piloting the batmobile and we briefly cut to outside his campaign van which is <laughs> rocking vigorously are we yep. meant to yeah. assume that everyone outside <laughs> looking at this just thinks the penguin is boning down hardcore i think everybody thinks the penguin is the sexiest stud in the whole city and they're just like well yeah there's fucking blood on there i don't know what you know. yeah he's so hot yeah you know what they say about a man with a big nose <laughs> that is what they say big umbrella gonzo, right yeah lots of chickens like dj was saying you really want gonzo to have sex with something don't you dj is this <laughs> no i'm just I'm digging said it some man. sort of fantasy i, what? I, don't I know. said that he was dating the chicken you're the one who brought sex into it <laughs> yeah oh please um don't, don't i 
right, so high and mighty. But yeah, so important the important detail, because we're almost at the end of this movie, kind of. Um they Penguin also calls Batman and it's like, ha ha ha, I'm the penguin. I did all this bad stuff to you. Ha 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 ha. And Batman puts a little CG in the disk drive or whatever. Yeah. And I just assumed that was at the in the moment I was like, oh, it's like reverse hacking, like they all do, where his numbers are gonna fight penguins' numbers or some shit. <laughs> but what is that actually? Well, Nando, like what is he is oh, yeah. recording what the penguin is saying here so that <gasps> later when the penguin is giving a big political speech, he can play it back complete with DJ style <laughs> remixes, even though that doesn't work on CD. Not your CDs, but bat CDs it does. B- bat CDs are played like a record player with a needle instead of with lasers. But yeah, but laser disc, yeah, yeah. And uh, oh god, I love that scene. That's and, probably uh, my favorite a, scene in the movie. In a scene that could not have aged worse. Uh, him saying one kind of mean thing vaguely about the people of Gotham, not even admitting to any <laughs> crimes or wrongdoing, yeah. just sounding kind of rude, just immediately tanks his campaign. People throw <laughs> food at him. It's over. There's Shrek no is way like, ever I'm be mayor. Done. Yeah. yeah. It, I thought you were one of those nice penguin sewer men that everyone <laughs> would monsters. love, but it turns yeah. out you're mean. <laughs> I called them rubes or whatever. Yeah, forty-seven percent of the Gothamites will never vote for me. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this? I put the I, first ever a, tape. of the forty-seven of the the forty-seven percent of people who support uh, the current <laughs> mayor. I put half of them in the basket of rubes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could umbrella someone on Fifth Avenue. Wow, 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 wow! I get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> what other things have they said? When you're famous, they let you do yeah. it. They let you do whatever you want when you're well, famous. That, yeah, that they might let you, in this they let you pin as many campaign buttons on their breasts as you want. Yeah. <laughs> and Max Shrek would be like, listen, I don't agree with everything he says, but he's my candidate. <laughs> I think the penguin's still better than whatever his name is because of crime. And have you looked at the mayor's emails? He did an email, a personal email account. The worst crime of all time. Yeah, yeah. I think some of the Batman are good people, but most of them are criminals. We They're have bringing bats. bats and crime. <laughs> Immigrating into our city. They bring crime, the rapists, and some of them are good people, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, 15 other terrible things politicians have said recently. Oh, man, no, yeah. He's uh, he's, he's a pretty good politician. I actually think if Penguin would get elected, probably. If it's a legitimate baby murder, the baby has ways of <laughs> shutting that right down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Oh, my God. She was bleeding out of her nose. Whatever. Who knows what. Everybody said that. That was fun. He's a good guy. Who's the penguin? It's important to keep the filibuster. We need it. Yeah. It's been around forever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. What I mean, like, Penguin's platforms would probably be like... I mean, Penguin... Okay. Penguin's platforms, if we had to kind of reverse engineer what he does think, he would be anti-pollution, maybe, kind of. Yeah, he says stop global warming, start global cooling. Yeah. And uh, against corruption... So that's good. Like, it seems like in the beginning of the movie, he's like, I've got all this bad dirt on you, Max Shrek. Uh, I want you to help me. But he doesn't, like, like Shrek, you know? Like, he's like, yeah. mm-hmm. he's kind of sucked into, he's ruined by the <laughs> political system. It's really about how politics is the problem. Plus, after his mayoral campaign uh, fails, we find out that he supports strong biblical values. That's true. That is true. And he's, <sighs> uh, I mean, he's like, he's a poor person person you know he works in the the sewers and stuff he works as a penguin at the zoo (laughs) yeah he's a working man (laughs) he's great remember when shrek dresses up like a fortune teller or something at the at the party (laughs) yeah at his max parade ball that's gotta be that's too much that's gotta be annoying all night you know oh yeah Uh, as someone who has worn a heavy helmet before it gives you a a headache real quickly (laughs) I mean, yeah, and, and Max Shrek doesn't even get headaches from spinning umbrellas. I do like that bit where, uh, in the beginning, where he tries to do hypnotizing umbrella, and uh, 
Max Shrek is like, what do you think? That's going to hypnotize me? And he's like, no, but it'll give you a headache. And he's like, nah, maybe not. <laughs> it's cute. Then he just shoots a gun. My weakness, headaches. Yeah, yeah. But then Penguin decides. So Penguin goes rogue after he gets DJed to Oblivion. And he t- puts on his little onesie. And then he has a whole <laughs> nother plan that is awesome. And I wish was kind of what the movie was. That was his secret plan the whole time because that's right, what he was right. planning for in like the record hall and everything. But then like this is where the fun starts, I feel like, for as a movie for me. He's got penguins that have little rockets on them and they're gonna all go blow up the town. It's, it's Well that's that's the backup plan. Originally his plan, and this is why I said he had strong biblical values, is to kidnap the firstborn son of every family in oh, Gotham yeah. and murder them. I forgot about that. I didn't. I yeah. But then that's God, cool. But then Batman stops the one kidnap train he has with like two cages that's supposed to hold every firstborn son in Gotham. I don't know. Logistically, seems difficult. And once the monkey comes back to let him know that plan has failed, <laughs> he decides that instead he's just going to send out penguins with bombs to blow up the whole city. Yeah, but like not like. Not like dynamite bombs strapped to their chest, like little rocket Yeah, bombs. they're no, all like going to... Yeah. 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 You almost don't really need the penguins at all. Seems like that could fact, just be done from wherever you want. The plan would probably have gone better without the penguins. Plus, I think he's supposed to care about these penguins. I don't know why he's okay with them dying. Yeah, he has them in like his little coliseum. They're like his actual subjects. They all yeah, sit they, in a nice line and stuff. They stick around long after his uh, his human minions have gone away because the plan's failing. Also, I like the idea that this zoo has two different kinds of penguins. It has, like, I don't know what they are, but, like, the big old penguins and the littler penguins. Emperor penguins, and I'm not sure what the little ones are. Yeah, I don't remember either. Uh, but those guys, too. And, they're, but they, and it's weird, too, because they are both seem to be very well trained by penguin, but also... Kind of remote controlled mostly because you are able to hack into the frequency and make them all go home. Yeah. And that's how they get them. You can send out the penguin call that makes them go, oh, I guess we should go home. Yeah. Instead of standing in the middle of Gotham. <laughs> and they all like run home too. It's great. I love, I just, I love it. How many penguins does the zoo have? Is this mostly a penguin zoo? <laughs> It's like a it's like a penguin reserve and then there's some other animals maybe but like yeah it's a penguin place well penguins are fairly social animals so if you're going to have penguins you need a decent amount of them but like it is a lot of penguins <laughs> yeah i think it's a uh, i think i mean it'd be a pretty fun exhibit you get to see some weird shit there's also a monkey but i guess the monkey is a circus monkey um right apparently danny devito and that monkey did not get along <sighs> because of politics the yeah, monkey the... was real butt in the hat for Bob Dole. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I guess this was 92, so it would have been George H.W. Bush. Yeah. yeah Dan- well, Danny DeVito was a big Ross Perot guy. Uh, oh, no, Danny. <sighs> yeah, so uh, he... I have no idea if that's true or not, by the way. I'm uh, he came around. He's cool now. He's very, he's very like, hey, Walmart, let your people unionize and stuff on Twitter. So, yeah. I like, but anyway, in that scene where the monkey gives him the note, apparently the first time they tried to do it, the monkey tried to attack his nuts. Holy shit! If only he had that gun, he could have killed that monkey. Yeah, it'd <laughs> stop him. Uh, that monkey was on set for the for the Catwoman scene and was like, "This is what they want actors to do: grab them in the nuts." Just well, luckily, straight for the dick. <laughs> luckily for all the women of Gotham, the ba- the penguin suit is so padded that uh, <laughs> it's it did not injure him. Yeah. Uh, I do think thematically the penguin is kind of all over the place because not only does he live in the zoo and have a bunch of penguins, but also he's got the circus thing, but also he has his big rubber ducky car, which I love, <laughs> but that's not either of those things. Really? It's b- birds. I guess it's That's birds. a third thing. Yeah, that's birds. But like this penguin doesn't seem like a bird guy. He seems like a penguin guy specifically. Oh, we completely skipped over the part of the scene where the penguin is trying to fuck Catwoman. Where oh, he goes, why should I trust oh, you? Yeah. And the way she responds to that is by trying to swallow his bird whole. I forgot he does have that bird, oh, too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's pretty weird. <laughs> I was just sitting there like, in no way is this an answer to his question, Catwoman. What is the point? Yeah. It works, though, kind of. I guess it does work. They do work together. Yeah, I don't know if he's completely well, convinced, but he's kind of just like, all right. Well, he threatens to kill her cat. 
So like, right. I don't know. It's like a weird standoff is what it becomes. Why does she bring her cat to this? Like, well, she doesn't have cats. They're just the cats that are around. Yeah, the cat's right, got but- a mind of its own, DJ. It's a strong, proud, independent cat. Oh, man. It is. Yeah, it's pretty weird. You know what else is weird about the little penguins? They have their whole giant, um, uh, like, penguin um, get-ups with the robotic parts that are going to fire the um, fire the rockets. They also have, like, little helmets with targeting computer, like, targeting eye bits on them. And when he p- fires yeah. the first one, it goes onto that thing's eye. Is that penguin deciding where to fire it? <laughs> we can only assume. Yeah. This movie has such a very complicated like penguin operation, penguin setup. I'm very respectable uh, operation. It's commitment to the bit. And as, you know, mostly nitpicking, we, we respect the commitment to the bit. Yeah. Speaking of Christopher Walken, thing in life. Christopher Walken explodes, kind of, like we were saying. Um, there's a lot of electricity in this movie. Uh, Catwoman has a taser at one point, and then also electricity later in the very end it's like the taser that like introduces her to her life of crime yeah it's like she's an electricity supervillain that just happens to have cat stuff <laughs> go on in the middle oh my god an electricity supervillain who like starts <gasps> out as a nerd and doesn't trust anyone yeah is this a callback to amazing spider-man 2 a movie that comes out like 15 years later is that what this <laughs> yes. is exactly you figured Very it out clever. Cracked the code Are there electric eels in that capacitor that she's underneath Oh, yeah, because it's about oh, yeah. power, and, and too. animals give them their power. Yeah. yeah. And there's too many villains, and one of them's a silly little monster man. Oh, my gosh. And one is business daddy-son guy, like Harry Osborn. But not really, because Shrek and Batman aren't friends, and, yeah, he doesn't have goblin disease. Um, But, yeah, and uh, that bit's fun. Yeah, it's I like bit. when Batman and, like, pe- uh, Catwoman fight Max Shrek, and Max Shrek is like, hey, Batman... I forget what he says, but Batman just palms him, pushes him back. He, he like, backhands everyone. That He bat, uh, backhands Catwoman at one point. Like, he just backhands everybody. This is different. That's his move. Shrek walks it's- to Batman, and Batman, like, does a talk to the hand to Shrek. <laughs> and, oh, like, pushes him away. Yeah, Very okay. 90s Batman. But, yeah, you're right. He does the backhand. And, I mean, like, bet this is back, because in the, in the animated show, he would do the, um... The -the over-the-shoulder punch. That was his big, big Mm -hmm. number was the, like, you didn't think I saw you, but I did. Poor Pam. Uh, But, yeah, they were just kind of figuring that out. What do you think of the relationship between Batman and Catwoman in general in this movie? Because it's pretty much over. She's about to get shot a bunch. I think Bruce Wayne has terrible judgment. That's for sure. Has never been in question. So the thing about this Bruce Wayne is, you know, typically he does the kind of millionaire playboy thing, you know, where he dates around but never... Uh, you know, it's just a cover and he doesn't really care. This Bruce Wayne falls in love at the drop of a hat. <laughs> he doesn't. Yeah. He, right? he only goes on dates where he thinks he's going to spend the rest of his life with this person. Yeah. He also has a type True. too. It's another blonde woman. What happened to Vicky Vale? I can't remember. He, he just kind of vaguely alludes to it not working out. He's just like, yeah, not. It makes sense. Um, And in the third one, he will date. Yeah. You know, now that I think about it, third one, he dates Nicole Kidman. I think is blonde in that movie, even though I think she's naturally redhead. And then in the next one, he dates Poison Ivy kind of or like is into her. But he also has a random blonde like woman on his arm as Bruce Wayne at the charity auction or something. So, yeah, maybe it's just like every time he sees a blonde woman, he loses his mind. Which is interesting because Catwoman's not usually blonde. She's usually got black hair. Like a cat. So, like a cat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, she also has nine Come lives, on, thankfully, <laughs> for when she gets oh shot a bunch of times. Yeah, and gets thrown I can't tell, off like, a couple of Does she have nine lives? Or yeah, I, so that is like real. She has I like think nine it's lives. Deliberately cause... unclear. I mean, like okay. if she has nine lives, it, it, like he's like shooting her once per life, but it's not like I don't know. I feel like if I were they her and I got to heaven, I'd be like, yeah, but they didn't all kill me though. Technically, this is like four lives max. Yeah, like, no, if there was, like, a headshot and it's like, oh, yeah, she did. <laughs> yeah, imagine, Man, and, guys. and she's like, seven, and then another headshot, six, <laughs> just keeps getting up. <laughs> it's like, god damn, I can't kill this one. Yeah. Guys, we can't get into this unless you want my, my big rant about how they counted Doctor Regenerations on Doctor Who. I don't know what that is. Like, I know what yeah, those yeah, are, but I don't know what, let's, let's hear it. No, I don't, I don't want to do it. <laughs> Okay. Well, that time of my much. life is past, Nando. 
Uh, maybe I'll get into Doctor Who and then we can do it. I won't, though. Not in a million years. I mean, I watch that other right show, so Ar- who knows? Right after Arcane, yeah. NFT, and Bill Maher. That's, you know, yeah. That's... I won't. I, I, as much as I love the Star Wars and Spider-Man fandoms, I think I can do worse. I think I can find a more toxic <laughs> fandom out there. Uh, Probably. Yeah, and I think it's going to have to be Doctor Who. But um, you guys, then everybody explodes and dies and stuff. Catwoman kisses Max Shrek, and he explodes. With a taser. They have a three-way with the taser. makeout session like Taika Waititi did, except with a taser. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then, yeah, he turns into the Crypt Keeper. Penguin, I forget, what kills Penguin? He it's- just kind of dies from of his earlier wounds. Actually, I have right. no idea what kills Penguin, because what it is is... All the penguins show up and Bruce Wayne has the detonator or Batman has the detonator. Excuse me. And penguins going, oh, no. And then he gets the detonator and is like, ha ha and presses the button. And then a bunch of bats come out and uh, hassle him until he falls through the window into the penguin enclosure. And that's what kills him. And it's like, why did the bats attack him? What did pressing the button have to do with this? I don't understand what just happened. It really stopped those bats. What more do you need to know? You know, what do you want to see him do? Wiki, wiki, wick on the uh, on the bat um, CD ROM here well, too. Batman didn't release the bat bats. The bats had nothing to do with Batman. I'm pretty sure. Weren't the bats in the Batmobile? Doesn't he have them? I don't know. They Maybe. were in the Christmas tree earlier. Yeah, the, just the penguin had set up. I assumed he. Batman figured that out or something because sometimes Batman can like summon bats with like a sonic whatever. Now that you're now now that you think about it, I don't know. There's a lot of things that get hacked and shit in this movie, and I guess I just kind of attribute things I don't know because Batman. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Where do the bats come from? Yeah, I was I was very confused about what happened there. That's a but, great uh, question. It takes a little while, and he comes back a little later to try and get one shot off on Batman, but uses the wrong umbrella, and then he finally dies. Yeah, and he eats a bunch of gushers and, like, spits out (laughs) black and green and stuff. (sighs) Ugh, it's so gross. It's awesome. I love it. I really, really, really just think his design is terrific. The bats come out of something. I'm watching it now, but it's unclear kind of what that is. But they all, like, the bats flood the signal because... Of the button, I think. Like, it's like pressing the button gets you bats. But I, do they come out of the bat boat? Does he bring them? I think they're in the bat boat. Or whatever the fuck it is. The bat ski. He just, like, brings all the bats in and it's like, come on, bats! So I think his plan is, and this is an insane plan, but get the remote away from Penguin or whatever. Um, and then trick Penguin into pressing the remote. And when I press that, the bats will get him. Because that seems kind of like what Batman thinks is happening in the moment. But yeah, he packs a bunch of bats into his little boat before he goes, I guess. Because yeah, they come out of it. All right. Well, yeah. it's very, it's at the very oh, least insane. very confusingly shot. Yeah, it does not, it is not. And it doesn't help either. And obviously it's Batman, so what are you going to do? But everything's black. Batman's black. The outside is black. The suit is the black. The is black. The only thing that's not black in the scene is the pe- is uh, Penguin's big giant yellow uh, ducky. So when a black thing opens and bats come out, there's a lot of like... Was that a door? Was that the car? Was that Catwoman's face? I don't know. Everything's black. But yeah. Except the actors. Not the actors. <laughs> yeah. Is uh is what's his name in this? Speaking Billy of mayor. No, it's so not. Bill- nope. Billy no, Billy originally, yeah. originally the Max Shrek part was written to be uh Harvey Dent, Billy D. Oh, Williams that. Harvey Dent. And it would that's- end with the explosion having burned half his face. Oh, that's so good, except it really wouldn't kind of make sense for Harvey Dent, good guy, but still, it's pretty cool. Well, I imagine they, they, kind of, they kind of changed things around a little bit uh, when they made it Max Shrek, but yeah, that was the original plan. Oh, is it just because Billy D. Williams was busy doing whatever else he does? I didn't see what why Star they changed Wars. it. Hmm. Yeah, that's wild. I like that a lot more. That's actually way too many villains, so that probably wouldn't work. But yeah. Well, he wouldn't um, have been Two-Face in this one. It just would have been kind of his origin story for the next movie. Yeah, I feel like the thing with Shrek, though, is like Shrek isn't like, even though Shrek is there, he's more just kind of facilitating all the weird shit Penguin's doing. But I feel like Billy D. Williams almost would have drawn focus. I mean, I don't know. This movie's fine on its own, so I, I can't complain. Um, But yeah, and then Catwoman's alive again at the end. The end. Very good. Pretty cool. Yep. yep. That's the end of the movie. Huzzah. Yeah. The little... We, we mentioned a little penguin funeral. Oh, yeah, the penguins quark, take quark, him quark, to quark. the water, kind of. 
that what how what what coordinated penguins they're so they're so like in sync yeah, yeah and they know it's about shit. human funeral traditions because they're all his pallbearers yeah this better be in a, it's probably an amazing zoo like you go there and it's just like the penguins are like doing all kinds of cool choreographed shit it's like who is teaching these penguins to do like you know a kick line and it's like well i i don't know they just know but really it's the guy that lives in there that everyone knows exists and is an urban legend but no one can seem to connect to these specific penguins but yeah and then at the end uh bruce wayne is sad because he thinks he sees catwoman but then he does it is her but then he doesn't and then she's never back in the sequel so never don't even think about it no oh, but she was <laughs> supposed to get her own spin-off movie that eventually became the holly berry movie yeah, I wonder, did Mich- how did Michelle Pfeiffer feel about these? Did she hate them? No, she loved doing this. She actually lobbied hard to be Catwoman because she loves the character of Catwoman and really wanted to play her. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. In fact, it was yeah, originally she- cast as Annette Benning, and she was crushed. And then Annette Benning got pregnant and had to drop out. And so she was like, please let it be me. I really, really want to do it. Do you think she met Annette Benning and was like, or Annette Benning's husband and was like, you should definitely impregnate Annette Benning. It would be pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's having babies now. Go get them. And then that worked for her evil plan of being Catwoman in the movie. She was good. God, Annette Benning was like going to be Catwoman? What yeah. a weird sliding doors moment. I'm, God damn. You say sliding doors moment once a podcast now. It's great. Um, <laughs> it's because of all, these, of sliding doors all the moments. sliding doors he's installed in his home. And, uh, <laughs> we should, we like should do Tyler the movie Sliding Doors. That one doors. video. We should do Sliding why Doors. Yeah, why don't we do the movie Sliding Doors? I've never seen it. I know the the gist of it like i know the whole yeah. you know but I, I know. i've also never yeah. seen it but i know the premise obviously or i wouldn't understand dj's sliding doors <laughs> reference at all i feel like they talked about it in some show i watched it was probably rick and morty or something but you know what i'm talking about some like silly cartoon where at one point they go like this is like a sliding doors thing i don't, I don't like explicitly know what you're seems like some to. shit yeah. that happened in like community or rick and morty it, or I'm, one of yeah those. i'm sure it has been referenced in a show like that i just cannot specifically remember an example i'm trying to remember right now what like 1995 did she, like she would be an interesting annette benning would have been an interesting uh Catwoman, kind of probably yeah i don't know i don't know too much annette benning stuff honestly i'm looking at her wikipedia page now it's like mars attacks love that um Another Tim Burton. Another Tim Burton movie. That's right. Uh, all kinds of great stuff. Captain Marvel, American Beauty, a movie we all like, and no one is bad in it. Um, one of the least rewatchable of the uh, those movies. And that movie, the kids are all right that I never saw. Anyway, I like yeah. that movie. I bet it, it seemed fun. Uh, and uh, yeah, so. I don't know. I kind of would have liked to maybe see her show up in four in the fourth one of these as like not like as a foil for or like not. I mean, there were a lot of characters that were thrown into the fourth one because he had Bane, you had Poison Ivy, you had uh, Mr. Freeze. Robin was in that one because he was in the last one. And then you have Batgirl, kind of, but not really because she's like, I don't know, Alfred's niece or something. Um, so there probably wasn't room. But, yeah, she kind of got a, got a raw deal there. Maybe, what if, do you think she could show up in, like, The Flash or something if Batman is in the new one? Like, You mean, I mean, if they were able to get a huge star like... Uh uh Knox in Batman 1989. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That actor, then you know they could get anyone. Yeah, I. uh Yeah, I could see that being the thing. Like, I, I could see her showing up in the Flash you as know, like the the thing is a Marvel character, D- Mando. There's a lot of things. It's probably she could be Swamp Thing. Maybe that's a DC guy. Is Swamp Thing DC, and then Man Thing is Marvel? That's right. Yeah, I feel like Swamp Thing you see pretty frequently these days, or like every so often. Ever since the. uh God, who was it? Was it Grant Morrison? No. Alan Moore? Alan Moore, right. Yeah, there you go. Ever since that Alan Moore series, a lot of writers have been like, look at the Swamp Thing in there. He's kind of cool. I think Um, Swamp Thing took off a lot more than Man Thing. Yeah, Man Thing, I feel like I've not seen in a comic in a very, very, very long time. But, uh, I mean, it probably has something to do with the fact there's already a thing in that universe, so there's no room. And he is also a man. So everybody's like, there's the Man Thing. He's that orange guy in New York City. You know, Brooklyn. And he's like, no, 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 it's me. I'm a friend of the trees and nobody gives a shit. But yeah, I think she could show up in this. I mean, she's the wasp now. So, you know, she's busy, but also not but the also, wasp. Is but she that original busy? Wasp. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I Plus, mean, I, I guess just, maybe she'll have to step up to be the new uh, maid <laughs> wasp. <laughs> yeah. The other one's too busy doing her own research. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah. 
Oh, man, that A-Force movie is going to be something. It's going to be two people by the end of it. No Gwyneth, no Tisha, and no uh, and no that one, no Evangeline. That's fine. We, you know, whatever. Actors oh God, are she weird. She might have to be Wasp. Yeah. Oh, God. I think I, uh, yeah, I'd like to see Michelle Pfeiffer in the Flash movie as, I mean, if anything, I feel like we'll probably get like a little cameo or something in the end where she's like, hey, I'm a new person in town. What's my name? Selena Kyle. <laughs> or what's what's my name? Patience Virtue or whatever the fuck the one from <laughs> Halle Berry's one was. And then we're all like, oh my God, she's going to be in Flash. But yeah, I don't know. This is a good movie. Do you think this is better or worse than the last one? I think it's more worse. interesting. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But what about the creator? I agree. I, I think this movie is more fun. I think I had a better time with this one than the last one. That's what I'll say. Interesting. Interesting. Something's always happening. In the last one, there was some stuff where it was just like Joker fucking around. And it was fun. But like, it wasn't. I don't know. This one is just a laugh a minute. Not like laugh a minute, but like it's like everything is insane. Everybody's dressed all crazy and doing backflips and has helicopters in there. Like it's it's wild. Yeah, it's it's more bananas than uh, than the first one. And I think it has some story problems. And like I said, I don't know that the tones entirely mesh, but that's also true of the first one. And that one is but this one at least uh, is, like I said, more wild. So I'll say I, I like this one a little more. Yeah, I feel like most Batman movies are pretty good at being like, I, I don't know, entertaining on their own just by virtue of having whatever bat villain is in them be just kind of a weirdo in them. Danny DeVito well, really, really nailed it. We'll see if we maintain that opinion as we go on in this particular film series. I mean, absolutely. It never, it doesn't, it doesn't slow down. It only gets better. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> I also just want to point out that part where Batman puts the dynamite in that guy's pants. That's pretty cool. And smiles. He smiles. He's like, I'm he's about to so blow happy. your dick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to murder Cat you. Catwoman will Batman never touch your dick. Killing. <laughs> Couldn't even believe it. So you guys want to get to our classic segment? Yeah, why not? Hey. I wish that we would. Hey. Anything to recommend to the five people? <laughs> uh yeah i got a couple things so uh there's a new aziz ansari special on netflix called like aziz ansari like on stage or like oh, dj like, he no a... he's canceled canceled it, that should be the name of his why... special canceled <laughs> why do, why no, do we cancel he's, aziz ansari? he's not like canceled canceled he just <laughs> i don't want to get into it uh... no he's yeah he's on the no, is he like actually canceled like was no, it like a thing it's really? complicated he was canceled in the sense that he like kind of went away for a little bit, but he didn't do anything okay. that bad. He certainly did nothing criminal. It's just yeah, and it does... some woman told a story about him being kind of like a shitty date uh, that didn't make him look good, and it became a whole thing. Oh no, he did a thing that was made him a bad date. Oh man, I mean, you read about it; it's a little weird, but like he's. I think I haven't seen his specials since then, although I have seen bits and pieces on like YouTube. Um, like they'll put like Netflix will put a joke, but I think he did a special where he like talked about it and it wasn't terrible. And he was like, I thought about it and I learned something. I don't know. But more like this. I thought about it and I learned something. And I was like, Hey, I don't know. That's my season. Sorry. It's voice. It's not good. It's like now people think of that when they hear about him, but he's not like canceled. Yeah. I, I, also, I like never heard of this. I don't know what kind of weird bubble I'm in. I also think we might have kind of been like, that's enough as he's on sorry for a little bit. <laughs> his his little <laughs> shtick of like repeating everything a million times. I don't know. I like I liked his comedy. I still do. I think he's fun. But I, mean, I feel like I'm on trial for recommending this. This is this is crazy. Fine. And you are. Just kidding. Don't watch this special. It's not fun. Uh, <laughs> DJ liked bad. it. No. He especially liked how it was called canceled and triggering everybody or whatever. Right. He I don't think especially it's liked when Aziz Ansari invited Ricky Gervais up on stage so that they could talk about how the liberals are ruining America. And he liked that he's being vice president for Bill Maher's new campaign. He's going to Maher and Sari. Maher and Sari. Jeez, that's a weird. That's, that would yeah, be just a mouthful. Does not roll off the tongue. Bill Aziz. That's more fun. Um, but, I mean, it would be the Bill Maher candidacy in general would be what we call it because he would not let us forget it. Uh, it would be a Trump-Pence situation. But either way, yeah, DJ. So, I mean, you know, it's complicated. It's not, you know. 
I he does a special at the Comedy uh, Cellar. It's cool to see a comic just do a thing on a small stage, and it's fun. It's only half an hour, and it's like pretty. You know, it's it's like a Z's, but I don't know, it's pretty good. Yeah, you, uh, and, you, and I think I did see one bit of clip of this this week. It was another instance, but like Brian Regan. Or someone, I forget who it was, that had, oh no, like Jim Gaffigan, where a good comedian had funny jokes about the pandemic that I didn't hate. I forget what the joke was, but it was something that was like, oh yeah, that is a funny observation that doesn't immediately throw me back into like, you know, flashbacks of fighting over toilet paper and stuff. So, I think you you wrecked that recently, didn't you, Nando? Yeah, the Jim Gaffigan one was just straight up good. It turns to like, I watched the whole thing. This, I think I saw like a clip on YouTube, like I was saying, because Netflix publishes them as their little own videos and i was like oh yeah it's true the masks they're uh, kind of tyranny you know gotta do your own research me and the wasp <laughs> no she uh yeah i don't know anyway so that was good you like that special and you agree with everything he's ever done i did i did i would recommend that special it's on netflix uh it's good um the other thing was i played uh i started playing pokemon arceus oh uh, the one the one with god i'm uh, they're all the one so... with god if you if you believe <laughs> You know, yeah, if you, you know, accept if Jesus you, Christ you, into your heart. Yeah, you know, as as discussed last week, DJ doesn't. DJ uh, thinks yeah. that uh, no heathen, straight heathen. Yeah, straight up heathen thinks that uh, anyone who accepts Christ into their heart is a is a chump and a fool. Uh, but every time uh, he plays a Pokemon game, he throws a Bible into an incinerator because he just wants to make the point really clear. <laughs> yep. He, th- he does not believe in poke creationism. That's why he said that's why there's evolution is because there is no poke God. Exactly. Teach the don't teach the controversy, you know. Anyway, also, I feel like at least two of the other Pokemon games have involved some sort of God or something. Right. I feel like uh there's yeah, plenty of Pokemon like that weird, are also like, kind of God. Well, to be fair, I mean, you talk to this one. This is this is going back to the first Poke God they did, which was in <laughs> Gen Four. So this is just that one again. It's not like it's a oh, new God. It's true. Okay. Yeah. Is that what Arceus is? I, I guess. Yeah. That's a Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. But you you talk to him. Like you talk to God. You talk to the Pokemon. I like, mean, I English? talk to God every day, DJ, when I pray. Right. Well, DJ true. believes Obviously. that. Yeah, that's something you know. You can't do it because God is dead. And DJ had to write that down when he went to college on a paper the first day. And he sued <laughs> yeah. Hercules or some shit. I don't know what those were. Right. And then, and then Einstein stood up and said, God is real. And the professor <laughs> shrieked and melted into a puddle. <laughs> yeah. So you speak to this God in, in the game. Yeah. Uh no so no it, it actually is like a fun game so it's not a true open world Pokemon game as it was pitched it's more like sandboxy but like the concept of just like kind of like roaming around and like there's Pokemon they could like attack you and stuff is like a pretty like interesting experiment I don't think the game's a home run but I think it's like worth playing if you enjoy Pokemon games if you don't like Pokemon in general you're not gonna like this I, um, I have that's been kind of how it goes seeing really good things about this game and I'm getting real close to buying it. I think you should. It's like it's the, the the shit you could do is like pretty fun, um, and I think there's a uniqueness to this game where like it's it's trying to be Breath of the Wild clearly, um, and it doesn't hit that mark. But like for a Pokemon game, like trying to hit like the open world concept and like introducing like crafting and like different kinds of items and um, like the Pokedex isn't just. Um, like getting a Pokemon, it's like uh, specific things with a Pokemon. Like see it do this move and defeat it with this move, and oh. like there's a little bit of more like an artificial grind. But I, it's interesting, uh, much like this movie mm. we talked about. So like I would definitely give it a recommend, like uh, on those merits. What does the Pokemon so, God believe? Uh, the Pokemon God. What are his virtues? That you should definitely. I don't know. Um, uh, catch Pokemon. Give ten percent of my Pokemon to the church or something. It's not. Yeah. It's not clear. It's really not covet clear. Gary's Pokemon. I don't know. Um, yeah, but it's it's a good game. Like it's a solid game. Well, like like Diggins, if you're on the fence, I would say like take the plunge, go for it. Can you and DJ uh, um, like Diggins and DJ? If you guys both got it, could you play each other, or is it only one person? Yeah, no. There's battles and like all like trading and all the other classic uh, Pokemon multiplayer options. It's all there. But Mystery gifts, all that stuff. I nice. do need to save my playing games with DJ energy to help guide him through the world of Elden Ring, though. Oh my god. That, oh well, that's never my god. Come out, so or ruin fine. my game of Elden Ring. <laughs> or I could just invade you over and over again, sure. Well, yeah. When does that come out? It's gotta be soon, right? Oh yeah, we're in the month of it. Yeah. It's the 25th of February. Mm-hmm. I cannot fucking I've got wait. it pre-ordered. Wait. <sighs> well, For what? 
Throw that money PC. in the trash. That game's not coming out. Ah, uh, PC. I don't PS5, bro. bro. I don't have a PS5 DJ, so oh, God. Is there I not crossplay? The privileged few. Uh, I don't know actually. Oh. It might honestly, because it's not. It's not like a it shooter. P- it's not a big deal. Yeah. Right? Why not? I also yeah. could just get it for like PC. Like, there's a reason I couldn't. Right? But you know. Well, you got the PS5. I won't let you. you. Might as well use it. If you try to buy it for PC, I'm gonna come and steal it from you. You know? Okay. That's I'm that's sure. what Pokemon God wants. I believe that. I do believe. That. Is he God in the sense that he like created the universe or created Pokemon? Yes. Created the universe, yeah. baby. What? Okay. Well. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> and sure. you can catch him and use him for battles with other <laughs> right. <20-year-olds. laughs> Does he know everything? Uh, omnipotence is not clear. Is there a Pokemon Devil? <laughs> also not clear. Well, it's based Does on more a... Japanese uh, religion, no. like yeah. Shinto, which does not really have an, a devil figure per se. It, it's not actually Christian God. It's but, yeah, they may they. It's my, Mr. Mime can maybe be the devil of that u- universe. <laughs> I, this game sounds wild, but also there's just the Pokemon stuff is wild. Yeah, yeah. Diggins, you got anything to recommend? I do, Nando. Uh, I watched a TV show on Amazon Prime. Ah, you mother. Uh, I haven't watched uh, it yet, but go on. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is an adaptation of a hit uh, online show that you may have heard about uh, called Critical Role. The uh, oh, ho, ho. the uh, streaming show about uh, streaming as in they, they live stream it, not as in it's on Netflix or whatever. Oh, this uh, is about... not the thing I was thinking of then. This oh, wow. Thing. Okay. I was oh, no, thinking this of the is... after party. Oh yeah, no, no, no. no. Uh, this oh, what, is... what is this? Critical Role is a uh, a live stream of a bunch of voice actors who play Dungeons and Dragons together, and it's just their campaign, and you can you know see them play through all their different sessions. It's a humongous time sink because they're like four hour sessions, and there's like a hundred per campaign. So you know it's a it's a pretty daunting barrier to entry to get into however uh a while ago they had kickstarted doing an animated version of the first campaign uh which has now finally come out uh so the first three episodes are up on amazon prime called the legend of vox machina uh which uh is kind of very condensed uh and streamlined story of that first campaign around where it started in the stream um and it's so far it's it's pretty fun it's pretty charming it's uh because they're all voice actors they all just are doing the the, like their characters uh and you know they're good at it because they're professionals who've been working for decades uh but then there's also a bunch of other characters as all the a bunch of other voice actors as all the npcs uh and it's just it's a very good distillation of what makes a critical role fun where you can have all this chemistry between the actors because it's the same people. Uh, it's e- it's much mm. easier to preserve that energy. Um, uh, it's a very not for children, is what I'll say. They maybe lean a little too hard on the, like, we're going to curse and show some violence, so you know this isn't for kids. But I think it overall works pretty well. Uh, and it's, it's a funny show that still manages to have, like, good fantasy tropes. Uh, and just be like kind of a fun adventure. Uh, it's hmm. it's only like I said, there's only three episodes out. I think they're releasing it in three episode chunks. So uh, next Friday is going to be another three episodes and so on until it's done. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's been pretty fun so far. So uh, you should check that out if you have any either uh, pre existing fondness for or interest in Critical Role. It's a really good way to jump in without having to be like, I need to do 100 hours of this. Interesting. That's that's cool. I saw those words, Vox Machina and stuff, and I just like trending and I was like, what is this? Also, when you said Amazon, I thought you said Apple TV Plus, which is where that after party show is. So I that uh, was my confusion. Yeah. Oh, also, uh, real quick, Nando, you tweeted about this. Uh, the latest episode of Game Changer is real good. Oh my god, yeah. Insane. What a, a psychotic almost. I know, like, I'm just right? like watching it and I'm like, you monster kind of. Like, <laughs> yeah, you, you incredibly considerate monster. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Like, that's the thing about that show. And I, you know, I love, I love all their shows and they're all, all their shows are great. Um, but that one, it's just like, I watch it. And I'm like, what's the next one even going to be? Like, after, especially under last season, I was like, like, what else can they even do? And then they, like, do stuff like this and the episode before it with the TV set. Um, oh, that was good, too. 
they've just done so many wild like i, I just they, they come up with such crazy stuff but yeah the most recent one i think the most recent one as of this this recording might not be like the most accessible necessarily or like you know kind of helps if you've seen some of these things before um right, yeah. but it is like an all-timer crazy thing that they did all right but what about you nando you got anything to recommend yeah uh i mean i've been you know i've been just here you want to be you know in the house um doing covid uh, stuff so i haven't gone out to the movies or anything and i was looking through a uh looking through my rolodex of things that everyone has always told me i have to watch one of these days and I stumbled upon Arcane. I don't know why. I have no good reason. Because I'd watched the first episode and I went, this is fine. And everyone went, this is amazing. And I went, yeah, p- probably. But I don't I don't know. And uh, that's because the first episode and the second episode aren't that great. In terms of like being something different or interesting. Um, but then you get to that third episode and it's like, holy shit. They're doing something really wild and cool. And like, it's really, really, really good. Like I, I was, I think I described this the other day because it, when it starts, you can kind of feel the like young adult Hunger Gamesiness of it, which is the like there are two societies: the poor society and the rich one, and the poor one is underneath the rich one, and the cops are bad, and we gotta rebel or whatever, right? You can feel that in the DNA of the first episode. And it's not until the second episode that I was like, oh, but there's more going on in the top half, too. Like, we're going to see the whole picture of why this is all messed up in a way that's not, like, nuanced in terms of, like, teach the controversy. But, like, nuanced in terms of, like, this is about, like, it's about a lot of things as a show. And, you know, obviously at the heart of it, there's, like, some family and, and things like that. But there's a lot about, like, these systems and and the, you know, how they end up inadvertently kind of oppressing people and what um you know how how people can be corrupted by them and what some of the different um what's the word i'm looking for uh like pressures and incentives and how that all plays into it and it's just very complicated and there's characters that you like there's some that i think you go like oh this guy's gonna be fun and they are and then there's others that you're like i didn't really even expect to have any interest in that guy but wow he's pretty cool so i yeah I don't have a fucking clue any of this connects to the video game. I don't know what they're fighting over or like because there's some things that I, I think this is fun. You watch Arcane and it's a League of Legends like show, but I don't know. Do you guys know? Is it like in canon or like I think are- it's like Overwatch where the the game Overwatch is not canon to the story of Overwatch. <laughs> Right, but, like, is this all these characters' backstories in general? Like, I think Overwatch, you go, like, okay, so this is what Junkrat does. He does this and this and this and this, and that's why he got this. Like, if you hadn't, like, because as an Overwatch player who watches all the little videos and keeps up with character interactions, I can kind of guess where they all came from and who knows who and stuff like that. I'm wondering if this is expanding on this in a way that had not been done before, or... If all of the events of this were things that people were like, yeah, and then this guy betrays that guy. Like, as we all knew, they kind of talk about it, but we never watched it. You know what I mean? That's kind of my big question. I don't know exactly. I've never been a big league guy. I think it is kind of like that, where it's like, I think it's more people know where these characters end up. So you see a character and you're like, well, I know they're not going to be friends with these guys by the end of it. Um, That makes sense. But it's not necessarily the events themselves have been alluded to before. Yeah, it's um, it's a very... So that part of it is fun in the sense that you're kind of watching it and then a character will do a thing or like pick up a weapon and you're like, oh, that's going to be his thing. That's going to be his signature weapon later. And I bet that's what function he serves in the game. There's one part of it where characters are fighting over something and i'm like it took me a second to go like oh that's probably what the game is like people are probably trying to get more of these like i don't know like crystals or some shit to power their something to do something like so that part <laughs> of it is fun um like the voice acting is great i assume these are all also voice actors cause i don't know any of their names uh but like voice actors from the game um and the animation is just really 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 good and it's got a style that's kind of spider verse but not quite. But it's got a, um, it does kind of, like spider verse did, kind of take a couple of breaks and do little, like, flourishes that make it very uh, engaging as far as not just, you know, by, <laughs> by, like, 
you know. I, I, I don't think these are the video game voice actors, at least some of them, Nando, because I'm looking and Haley Steinfeld is one of them. Oh, who's she? She is She's like the main Vi. one. Right? Oh, get out. I didn't know that. I haven't really looked at that. I, well, I look at the credits because it comes up really quickly, but it all flies past. Um, interesting. I also didn't want to look at, like, how many people are in how many episodes, you know, because then they tell you which ones die. Also, characters die in this. Like, they, and that's another thing where I'm watching it, and I'm like, ah, oh, this guy's probably not in the game, so they probably know that that one's going to die and then be this, so I try to kind of stay away from that. I imagine a bunch of these guys are are voice actors. Probably. I mean, they are voice acting, so probably. They are now, yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, not uh, Haley Seinfeld, but yeah, she's just in there. She is... The character, it's her character from Hawkeye in live action in the middle of this show. So, wow, yeah, it's she crazy, still it's has a crazy voice decision. Actor. No, it um, is voice acting. It's her character from Spider Verse in there as, right, as Ghost right, Spider right. Spider Gwen, right. Yeah. Um, I have uh, two very important questions for you, Nando. Mm-hmm. One, when are Caitlin and V going to kiss? Uh, they almost do for a second, almost maybe once, and then it's like, oh, that's probably what everyone latched on to. So that that's the answer there. What's okay. two? Two. When are Jinx and Echo going to kiss? I don't know which one Echo is. Uh, oh, is that the boy? Do they are enemies, but also childhood friends. Uh, I don't. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I know who he is. It's unclear. I'm So currently I'm on episode seven, so I don't really know the whole story. Um, like I, There's like two episodes left, but I could see anyone kissing anyone. You know what? I, yeah. Oh, my gosh. The character, wow. Okay, so these probably aren't all voice actors. So real quick, one of them, so the girl that plays Jinx, uh, which is like kind of, I don't know. It's hard to explain. But a main character um, is in the Yellow Jacket show, which I don't watch, but she's one of the kids in it, um, oh, which I may um, watch one of these days. Once I, once I finish watching that, it'll probably be one of my recs because it is good. Have you you you've started then? So this play this yes. character is uh, Teen Jackie. So oh okay, she's she plays Jinx, and then Katie the Young uh, plays the character Caitlin, the one you were talking about. Who's going to kiss him? Um, and uh, that is Cho Chang from <laughs> a uh, certain movie series. Even um, just saying Cho Chang, <laughs> yeah, <versus>. right. <laughs> It's so it feels it's it's rough, uh. But yeah, they got like Josh Keaton. There's some guys in here that I'm like, that's a voice acting person. Um, but yeah, it's great. I really, really, really like it. Oh, and then Remy Hill. I know this guy. He's from stuff. What's he from? I don't know. It's a good. It's a really good. Uh. Oh yeah, Brad from Spider Man. He's in here. Um. But yeah, it's a fun show. Everybody should watch it. Um. Watch the first three episodes. I think a lot of people will get pulled in by episodes one and two. But for me. It took until the end of the third one to know, like, this show is going somewhere, as opposed to just kind of being a little run through everybody's vignettes to explain what happens in the game. So, recommend that. As far as comics, I don't know. I haven't read anything that exciting. She-Hulk's back. That's great. Love She-Hulk. I hear the Monkey King, I think, is is out now, um, which is like a kind of a Chinese New Year, Lunar New Year kind of thing. Uh, but I haven't, haven't gotten into the store to read that. And, um, yeah. Next week, what are we doing next week? Are we going to go to see Fucking the movie Moonfall? and get COVID to see Moonfall? I don't know. You know it. I mean, unless we got a better idea. No, I mean, we could, like, we could do more Batmans, but I, I think, I don't know. I feel like I'll probably be able, I, well, you know what? I guarantee I'll be able to find an empty theater to watch Moon uh, Moonfall in during the day. But, um, yeah, I wish they had, they just let you buy these online because I would do that. I know. It'd be so much better. Well, we're going to risk it for the biscuit. Apparently. And also, um, yeah, because we got that. We got Uncharted and something else I can't remember. But there were three February things before Batman. One of them might be a Netflix movie. You know what I'm talking about? I'm not sure. I don't. Um, we've, we've, we've talked about this. Um, it's something. It's like on the upcoming slate? It's Yeah, I'm, I'm looking it up now. So it's not Jackass. Oh, oh, it's um. I think Kingsman comes on Hulu or something. Oh, right, yeah, that's what we were gonna do. Oh, so we'll yeah. probably do that as well. I don't know what the schedule is, but yeah, it's like Moonfall is this week, um, and then or this next week, and then two weeks later, three weeks, the eighteenth, whatever that is, is Uncharted, um, and uh, I think that's it for February, um, unless you guys want to do Medea Homecoming. 
<laughs> oh, no thank you. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Oh, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, maybe mm. they're good. I don't know. They're popular. Someone must like them. So maybe they're, you know, I don't know. I mean, I have watched one. I don't think they're very good. But that's not, you know, is what it is. But yeah, we're going to talk about Moonfall probably next week. Anything to plug? Okay. DJ. Uh, same old Roses and Rejections with your fun old Bachelor content. So, yeah, it's a... Uh... Same old, same old here. That's all. Diggits? Uh Yeah, same as usual. I uh, uh, I have my newsletter, a little perspective at substack.com, and I stream at twitch.tv slash this is an odd name. Me and my pal Bridget are almost done with Resident Evil Village, after which we'll probably move on to something else. Who knows? Mm. Woo. Do you have any idea? Fun, fun. I have an idea, but I don't want to spoil it just yet. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> How about you, Nick? Uh, besides videos, you put out a new video about Batman. Uh, but then also, I'm going to be on some podcasts in the future, but I haven't done them yet. So, there. besides this one, obviously. I'll be on this one in the future as well. But, um, so look out for that. <laughs> this is uh, Nando announcing he's quitting the podcast. Yeah, yeah, that's what, I'm, that's what I do say. <laughs> I'm going to be on some podcasts in the future. Not this one, other ones. Um, but... Yeah, so that'll be something to keep an eye out for. Uh, but besides that, uh, not too much. Um, yeah, next week, Moon is Haunted. We got to get it. Until Ooh. then, I am at Nando View. He's on Twitter. I'm at Zippy by Day. I'm at This Is an Odd Name. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Woohoo! Bye.